Hey, uh, Mark Marin in studio, fresh off his uh, appearance on Conan O'Brien, which I heard was great. I, you know, we go to bed at like nine o'clock, so I didn't get to see it. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was a good one. You know, I didn't leave thinking like I got to quit. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's always a good thing when you do anything and you leave like saying, "I know how to do this." Thank Christ. Yeah. But uh, that worked out all right. I was on with Bob Costas, and uh, it was one of those opportunities. He he stayed, and they don't always stay. So there's that moment, you get that weird moment where you're like, you know, I don't know that guy because, like, you guys have Jose Canseco on today, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they asked me, they're like, uh, Opie and Anthony have Jose Canseco on, do you want to do you want to stay in the studio? And I'm like, I don't know anything about sports, dude. You're asking the wrong guy. Maybe they should kick me out. I'll just be buzzkill. You know, I, I didn't. No, you should stay for our Jose Canseco interview. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay, but I told that to Costas. Like, I don't have nothing to talk about with that guy, with Costas, right? So I said, I'm doing this show tomorrow, and Jose Canseco is going to be on with me. And then I had to go, is that good? <laughs> you, you know, like, is, is, you know, is that? That's, and then I realized that I don't know nothing about sports. So I, the conversation was over. I'm sitting there with Costas like an ass, and I can't talk to him. He's actually a good commentator on other stuff, too. Like He's a pretty, yeah, yeah. across-the-board good commentator. You really don't know anything about sports? Well, look, not I, a baseball fan. None well, of what this? happened? Uh, if you want to honestly know, what, uh, you know, I'm I'm an athletic person. Oh, we but, all are. Uh, look at us. Tell. Look at you. Look great. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Do you want? All right, but uh, we're athletic specimens. Look at us. Well, the thing with me, I, we when, when make a calendar when the con when, when, when in competition. I don't think I was ever, you know, sort of properly guided that way. When I'm when I'm competing, if I'm losing, I want to break the game and leave. That that's just the way I am. So you know, it, it, and then when I was in little league, I was fat. So I was always the, they put me in center field because no one could hit it that far. So I, you know, there was just me and fat guys in center field. <laughs> and it, there was, well, here's why I'm not in sports. And this is know why I laugh? Because I know a little bit about Little League. Like, it sounds impressive to be in center field, but actually I think it's like the second baseman or the shortstop is actually playing center field. Right. Uh, yeah. he, he's talking about center field, like where the majors hit it. That's <laughs> right, where you, yeah. you do uh, put the slow kids. Because the, the, the center field where like 12-year-olds could hit to is uh, – is well covered by right. like the second base, right? And this is Pee Wee, so it's just me and fat guys, that fat guy in right field, fat, and you're just sitting there kicking the dirt around, waiting for something to happen. And this is why, and this is a true story. And I mean, I, I mean, I've told it before, but I was in center field. I hear a crack of a ball, and it's coming to me, and I'm backing up, and I back up, and I fall down. The ball bounces off my fat face, breaks my nose because I fell down on a sprinkler or something, <laughs> and that was just it for me. That was <laughs> it. You know, I got up. The, the coach was like, "Get up, you fat!" You, you know, and it was. It was awkward. It was humiliating. You know? Yeah, exactly. So I, that, that was it. The rest you just of it. weren't cut out for it. I wasn't you know, cut Mark, out for it. One of Canseco's most famous moments is a, a fly ball he lost in the lights, yeah. which bounced off his head and went over the fence for a home run. Mm -hmm. So, so, so he'll, only, he'll relate to that. Yeah, so maybe I should have stuck with it, and I wouldn't be, you know, playing you know, San Antonio for four people in a room that seats four hundred. <laughs> maybe I made the wrong call there. Dude, yeah. Wait, I, I was in, have you been to San Antonio to that I've thing? Not, no. Oh, hold on, I got to back up for a second. That uh, the Canseco thing you were just talking about. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty amazing. These guys are working today. Danny ran it in. High fly ball, right field deep. Canseco back to the track. Look it up. It is off his head. It looked like. Shouldn't this have been the first sign that he was on steroids, that he could take one off the head and continue playing? I don't think they took him out of the game. It would have been more an indication if he could catch it with his head. Right. <laughs> little hand just came out. Yeah, he did so mu so many steroids, he was starting to like sprout little hands uh, through his through his skull. Santarelli once said to me, I work with Santarelli on television, and I told him I, I, wasn't, I didn't watch sports. He literally, you know people who love sports. Yeah, yeah. Well, he literally looked at me like I had just said that. I, I don't even know what. He looked at me with shock and horror. He says, then how do you, how do you feel alive? <laughs> he, wow. Complete honesty. I mean, yeah. he, like, look, you know, I, I, you know, I can play mind games. You know, I'm really good at who cries first. Yeah, you know, I was played that with people, my wife a lot. Some people are so into sports; it's their whole life. Yeah, and I understand that you got to believe in something. I don't, I don't have anything against those people. I just have yeah. nothing to talk to them about because when I watch sports, I'm like a girl. Uh, literally, if I'm in a room full of guys watching sports and they have loyalties to teams, I'm the guy going, "Yeah, he hit it. He hit it." <laughs> <laughs> so San Antonio, because I, I think I, you were talking about being like in a room with four people. There's nothing worse as a comic. And when you when you see the waitresses sitting 
in the back, and you know after the first show they're going to be cut, and they always try to make you feel better, like yeah, there's some stuff going on in town, and you know it's just you. Oh uh, boy, they had a comedy. Yeah. They had a comedy condo there, dude. That I was like, I mean, you're above this now because you know you're, you know. Whatever, but uh, the uh, <laughs> I've heard of these comedy condos. I, I gotta just jump in. Yeah, the uh, the club owners they get one awful condo and they make the comedians stay there. But mm -hmm. you, usually, man, and you, the place is usually just a s hole because they don't really keep it up after a while. They they had good intentions well, at bother? first. It was probably nice and brand new, but this years later, it's just disgusting. Yeah, this is fifteen years into this club. <laughs> Oh. And, uh, man, it, like and I like Al Magical. He's this comic. I know he's funny. And I'm telling him, I told him I was going to San Antonio. He goes, dude, you better bring shower sandals and a sweeping bag. And I'm like, no, nah, come on. <laughs> and how bad could it be? Dude, I get there and I'm like, oh man, I should have brought shower sandals and a sweeping bag. Why was the bed <laughs> just gross? Well, it was like it had they. Well, they have the same linens. They had carpets. They had uh, you know vinyl upholstered furniture. And this is 15 years into a comedy condo, which they make clean. Once a week, but how much effort are they really putting into that? And you're dealing with comics. Who the hell knows what went on in there? Oh, so like for right. 50, it's like 15 years of a film just over everything. You kind of don't want to walk on stuff. You get into the bed and you're like, oh god, I should have you know, worn a coat or something. Why don't you just get a hotel? You're, you're way more known than to do that. You don't need to do that. Why don't you just say? Because I saw it as some sort of. Uh, I saw it as a lesson, Jim. I saw it that I was, you know, I'd, be, I'd become a biblical character and I was be putting through some sort of uh, process, uh, some sort of learning through humility process. I'm right at the precipice. Man, <laughs> you understand? Did it help? Uh, huh? Did it help? I, I wanted to kill myself for three days. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain amount of wisdom you get from that, where you're just sitting there looking out a window at an empty street in San Antonio. To a little, there's a crackhead there. Like I went to the Alamo. I didn't see that. Oh, whatever, man. So you're just sitting there going, I understood what Oswald was thinking, you know, in a window in Texas. But I'm thinking about assassinating me. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there, and, and there's those moments when you come through the other side of that, where you're like, I can do this. Everything's cool. And then you go perform for ten people in a room of four hundred. What? And and you're being too nice as we back up again. Anthony from Long Island writes, uh, Ope, Mark absolutely murdered last night on Conan. Costas sucked, and Mark Marin saved the whole show. Yeah, thank God. And you're going to be at man. what, Gotham Comedy Club this weekend? No, I'm going to be... Uh, I gotta, That's what they told me. What no, i got to leave. i got to leave tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to Seattle. I'm going to tape my, uh, my third and uh, possibly last CD in Seattle. People are asking me, why you're last? And I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you pick Seattle. That's where Kurt Cobain did his thing. Well, I don't think I'm going to do your thing after you. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just being a self pity and puss. How's your uh, single life doing? I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I'm just learning. Like, well, I'm in the middle of this. I'm in the middle of this divorce process now. Yeah, you have fun with that. What what is wrong with that? <laughs> you enjoy that? No, man. I just I don't under. Uh, you see, I don't want to bring us down here, man. You know, you know, we got a sports guy coming in later. No, bring us down because a lot of people could understand yeah. what you're going through. He's divorced t too. Ants, ants. Well, know, here's, oh, here's years into that. his or years something ago. like that. Well, there's a couple of things that I didn't. <laughs> yeah. You, well, yeah, we talked about it the last uh, one. Well, I when I was they. here last time, I think I was still. Holding on to hope. Oh, no. Hope, I wasn't? Hope yeah, goes out the window. You You're are. Absolute, was, you are, and it was sad for me to see. Because I was, I was, because uh, I remember I was watching what I said. Yeah. I was trying to yeah. be careful about things because mm -hmm. I, I, but now. Because you're thinking it might work out after something, all. You're I, past that now, though. Well, I mean, it's just, you start to have all these realizations, and now, like, uh, so, much, so much has happened since the last time I'm here. But the bottom, the bottom line is, is that I don't understand I, I don't want to generalize, you know, I, like I'm not a misogynistic person. I don't, I don't hate women. I hate like two. I know, and it's for good reason. <laughs> and, but I, I just don't understand what the hell she's doing, how vindictive they get. I just, I mean, this is a person oh, you boy. know. Yeah. What? But I got nothing, you yeah. know, and she gets, she, here's what happens. I get a lawyer. Uh -huh. I get a lawyer that I pay, what, a few grand for, because I don't know how to file for a divorce. Who the hell knows how to do mm -hmm. that? Right. You know, what are you supposed to, what, do you go to, online and get paperwork? I don't know how this to do is, that. This is carbon copy. Yeah. Okay, so I go get a reasonable lawyer, just some scrapper out in Tarzana, yeah. some friend of a friend, this woman's just like, you know, I'll fight it out for you, I'm like, and I'm thinking like, yeah. this is going to be good, it's going to be mm -hmm. like a mini-series kind of thing. <laughs> sure. Right? This woman can do it. So I, I get a nice, cheap lawyer, just so I can file, because I just yeah. want to do that, so I could uh, have sex with other people without asking her. Right. So... So then what happens is, of course, I have sex with the wrong person because she knows her. And I don't know if it was <laughs> on purpose or not, but I like to pride myself on thinking I'm not being an angry guy. But, you know, I did take some action. I was playing chess on some level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that aggravated her. She, so what happens is she leaves me. Three months later, I file for divorce, right? I go to Scotland. I, I come back. You know, I, I date somebody she knows. And now all of a sudden, I'm the idiot. I'm the uh, idiot. Because mm -hmm. it, like her leaving has nothing to do with anything anymore. Sure, that, that's got that's got nothing. But why would you date her sister? 
Well, I tried to date her mom, but I mean, you know, it's like... <laughs> I, <I'm> just, no. <laughs> was it a friend of hers or just someone she knew casually? I, I would say casually, but, you know, we're in comedy. We, you run in the same circles. What am I supposed to do? Go to another country? Right. You, you know, what are you supposed to do? You, 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 the community is what it is. You know what you know. Right. It's either going to be, you know, people in the rooms or yeah. going to be people in comedy. That's it. <sighs> so, so now what happens is... You pissed her off. I, I, yeah, I really did piss her off. But the thing was, is like, okay, w w that, to me, I was rationalizing, like, how unusual is that? You know what I mean? That's what people do. Yeah. You know, when you get left, you can't hurt them, so you got to go out and have sex with people they know. Sure. Right? It, didn't you do that? Uh, apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was the reason, because right? the other side of it is you're lonely, you're broken. Why am I the? Why am I the predator? How how come I'm not the victim in that situation? This yeah. woman would not leave me alone, right? Which is the truth. All right, nonetheless, I can't believe that. Oh, all right, so she goes out. So now she gets a lawyer, right? Uh, just like you did, right? The through the person, cheap, inexpensive kind. No, no. She went and got the supreme divorce lawyer, right? That celebrities use, right? And Numero course. uno. Thank you. Because Thank she you. is Divorce surrounded lawyer. by vindictive, right? Right. They they get they get a bug in their ear. That's right. And, and they go, yeah, I should. That's right. Ugh. But the thing that I don't understand, yeah. You know, bottom line is like, you got a lot more bread than I do, bro. And I, you know, and that's fine. I'm proud I, of you. Let me but tell look, you something. What I didn't at the time. No. 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 They waited and strung that divorce out until I signed a, a really good contract. They waited. I wasn't making a lot of money when uh, uh, we filed. But if you, but if you, if you signed a contract after you filed for divorce, I mean, is it, I mean, no, so what? future earnings, potential. I had the potential of making eighty-five billion dollars. I think the oh, and she deserves, you know, they figured a portion out. of that. They figured out a way to to make it so, like, no, it doesn't matter what you have. Doesn't matter what your pay is. Right. Potential. It matters. You have the potential to make this much, so you owe. This much, half of your potential of what you could make. I'm so not, I'm sitting there looking at this number going, I can't come close to ever making that in my life. A a a they had to figure over a hundred million, I do believe. They freak yeah. <laughs> over and you were million. like hundred and ten. Yeah. You what made the a hell little is that more. Based on? <laughs> Nothing. So but how were they able to actually uh, so they, what, what happened with that? So they just strung that along? They couldn't make a case based they on that. They strung it along and strung it along like they do because they want you to settle. They don't want you to go through this. They want you to settle, and they want to get a good deal. That's how divorces work. They rarely go to trial and rarely finish in court. Usually, both parties are so exhausted and punched out, and it's usually the guy, that you turn around and go, look, I want to end this. What do you need? What do you want? What do you want to, do to just get the get out of my life? And, and then you, you this, settle. This, this is not a hopeful conversation. Because no, it's not. Because, you know, I mean, I'm trying, like, I'm, I'm a, uh, for, for the most part, I'm a little morally bankrupt, but I'm a decent guy when it comes to business. I'm a mm -hmm. decent guy when it comes to loyalty to people, to friends. You know, I, you know, if I, you know, I only have two friends or three. So, you know what I mean? It's, I'm not going to screw them over. She was one of them. But now, I just don't, what, what bothers me is that in my head, this person that's doing this, given that she made her own money, given that, you know, that w the reason she left was like, I got a bag of cash, you know, I got my own bread, I'm taking off. And it was like, it hurt my feelings, but I was willing to give her what was legally hers. Uh huh. And then this other thing happens, and I'm like, how do you live with yourself? How, how do you, <laughs> but how, you know, how, how do, do you live, live with yourself? With your money. <laughs> but it ain't that much money. <laughs> Don't the, matter. My, my money, whatever, whatever that's going to be, it's, it ain't going to last her long. And the truth of the matter is, is that are, are you telling me that women in general are that able to justify and morally compromise themselves to just say, you know, screw, they don't have no conscience? Yes. Yeah. Yes. She's looking for a lot. I mean, that was like a big piece of what, of what whatever. She's, you're... she's looking to just uh, turn the. Well, no. He, what the deal is is that you, you know I got I got what I have. You know I, I made some I saved some money because I had the radio gig for a little while. All right, but now you know I'm in, you know what have I got? I'm doing stand up. You know, last year I, I got a little deal with HBO. I just finished a second draft of a script for HBO. But we had the writer strike that you know took me out of the game for months. And then uh, you know who the hell knows what's going to happen with that? It's not a lot of bread. So this last year wasn't that great. So she wants half of, you know, I don't mind giving her half what's legally hers, but the truth of the matter is there's some stuff that's not. And, and she's vindictive about it. She's like, you know, I, I deserve everything. I'm like, dude, you got, you know, you made some bread, you know, take, take half of this. And, and this is all based on the fact that you, uh, dated one of her friends, you think? 
No, I think it, I don't know what it's based on. The, the fact was is that she left, and for three months she said, "I don't know what I want to do." And, and then I said, "Well, what are we going to do with that?" And she says, "I still don't know." I said, "Look, I'm going to file for divorce because it's not fair." Mm-hmm. And that's that. I mean, the other stuff, dating. I don't know what the hell you're supposed to do. Aren't you supposed to date? I mean, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> hell yeah. I mean, it's like I'm you know I'm just a dude here. You know, maybe I maybe I made some wrong decisions. I don't know how to date. The I never guy just before. gets so screwed in these uh, divorces. Always. I mean, Always. this is an ongoing theme on the show. And it's you got to pay the the legal fees of the both woman sides. who gets the best lawyer around, and you get like a piece of crap lawyer, and then you have to pay for her good lawyer to screw you over, and uh, then you sit there and um, you you wind up settling. You have all these. Let me tell you something. You'll go through this too. You'll have all these delusions that court and divorce court is this thing that's based on your individuality, your you, she's her. Things will come out that'll prove that you are this guy that did this and she did this and you deserve what you have and she doesn't deserve this. And then you realize, oh my God, I'm just this docket number and it's cookie cutter. Like they look at you as john doe and jane doe and uh they'll they'll look at a slide rule and uh, crunch some numbers and they have a formula that they go through there's no there's no friend that'll barge through the door and go your honor i've known this man for years and let me tell you and then the judge goes that's fantastic dismissed you missy leave this courtroom you hussy i was it, hoping you'd do that it for me does it i'll i will it won't help <laughs> but uh <laughs> Well, yeah, see, now, now it really it just comes down work, to a formula? It comes down to this formula mm-hmm. to get you in and out the door quickly and get the next case in. There's no individuality in, in, well, in these I'm, cases. I'm starting to feel that. And, you know, oddly, you know, w- what you're doing for me now, which maybe I needed mm-hmm. to be done, yeah. is you're completely diminishing my hope. And, and maybe yeah, that's get why... Get rid of the hope. Get rid window, of it. Is this window open? Uh, no, that's because, one, thank God. <laughs> Mark, let me tell you something. It almost destroyed Anthony. Uh, the stress I saw on this uh, guy's face. Because well, it just went on and well, that's on what happens. and years. on. You can't, you can't years. live your life. And Anthony's, no. Anthony's a good guy. He, he was really trying to do the right thing when he was going through this divorce. I know Anthony can't really talk about things, but I saw things where he was really trying to make sure she was okay and they were going to move on and stuff, and that wasn't good enough for her. Well, that's and what she went for the, And she went for the jugular, my friend. Yeah, I just don't like. I don't know. I assume that she's on top of all this, and I, you know, I guess maybe am I being an idiot? Did we tell you the bank account? Being, did we tell you the bank account story? Am I being an idiot for talking about it? No, not at all. We no, love no, this. No, you just, we love you this. You don't subject. get into like details, really, and stuff. You don't get into like details of of uh, property and stuff like that. That could get you in a little bit of a jam up. This is, but you can talk about your life, especially if you're on the air. You're a comedian, also. I mean, your your job is talking about your life and well, I mean, it's just like, like that. I, so after a certain point, you know. like because I just don't understand it. Yeah. That that there there's a reasonable thing that needs to happen here, and you can't be reasonable anymore. No, and no, no. Reasonable goes out the window. And this is when Anthony realized it. I'll, I'll try to keep it vague, but oh. Anthony's going oh. through this, and I I looked at Anthony one day. We're in our office a few hours before the show, and I go. You got a you got a joint uh, bank account, and Ant goes, yeah. I go, you you might want to you know go check on that. And Ant, I swear to you, goes, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take half the money out. The the marriage is definitely done at this point. Definitely, yeah. there's no turning back. And Ant, as a good guy, goes, I'm gonna take out half, which is mine, and I'll leave the other half for her. Even though probably you you were more than half oh. was officially mm-hmm. yours. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. So he had way less than a hundred G's in the bank, and this is after doing radio for four or five years. Okay. Yeah. And we go down the, I remember like it was yesterday, it was lunchtime, we go down the bank and Anthony fills out his little uh, withdrawal, withdrawal slip. slip, hands it over to the teller, I'm taking half, I want my money, and the... Uh, the she goes, let me get the manager. Yeah. And the manager of the bank comes over and goes, um, you have a balance of $5.52 Not in Not only your did she account. take the entire joint account out, she left about four or five bucks just to make it hurt that much. Yeah, well, to not close the Wait, account. Well, here's the thing that I did that maybe was a mistake. Maybe, maybe you did it yourself. Is that from the beginning, and this is true, mm-hmm. from the beginning... I, I was I was honest. I was transparent. I mean, you know, they asked for stuff. I organized it. I spent three weeks putting everything I had together because yeah. I just wanted this to go smoothly. Right. And and I and I and I gave them everything. Ju- right. You just want it to get over with smoothly, civil, and fair. And fair. Yeah. And it just isn't. You know, it's just not enough. And then you start to. It, 
it, it is, and and because it goes on for so damn long, any any amount of joy that you have in your life, you're like, hey, you know, today's okay, man. I'm you know I'm having a sandwich. No. I'm outside, and then all of a sudden it's like, all it takes one email this from you. Know, Paul is just over you. This yeah, this, it this, never this, goes ugh. away. And this, I I ugh. have one of those over me anyway. It's a oh vague one that has God. no definition. I, I, oh, you. Poor I, I'm bastard. living with a, a Paul upon a Paul. Yes. I feel like I'm, several Pauls over me right now. Oh God! I, this I feel like I went into a time machine. I'm I know, at Anthony. I know. You got it, a lot to learn, my friend. The first thing, and That's it just, is, we it is away, horrid. We walked away from the bank. I had to give Anthony money so he could live for a couple days. I was like, I just he had need uh, a couple of bucks till she payday. Wiped, <laughs> she wiped them. Out. Need a couple of bucks till payday. There, <laughs> she up. wiped them. Out. Uh, you, the hope thing really does have to just leave. Uh, you got to leave any hope. Well, it's of, a shifting of, hope. Like before, I hope you know that that we could we could uh, still be together. Mm, but now you just hope that it it does doesn't get She'll as ugly. No, it'll you will go through times where you are so mad. You are so infuriated at at uh, the ex, at the ex's lawyer, at your lawyer, just pure utter rage because you can't convey what you want, how you want this to to go through. You want to open your mouth in the court. But you can't. You're not allowed. Your lawyer talks for you. It just seems to be, it, to me, you know what it comes right down to, and I don't know if it's because I'm a Jew or what. It's just like we're, yeah. waste, we're, we're wasting money. Yeah. Of course. I mean, what are you doing? I mean, of this course. is ridiculous. Such a waste. You know, you're wasting money. I'm wasting money. Yeah, I mean, this is no time for that crap. That's I mean, why what's going on in the, in the long right run, now. you will settle. I, I guarantee this will not get to an end to a trial, to a judge making a judgment. It, you will settle because it's after, not a, because it it's a wearing down process. Yeah, also, it's not in the lawyer's best interest to to settle right away. They want this no, to go on no, forever no. to build up their lawyer fees. Oh, but the weird thing is, I got part of the, I got nothing. I got nothing. Oh, you yeah, got enough, my yeah, friend. You got. I guess you got enough. You got enough, obviously. Yeah, you must right, have listen. a little something. It's about female greed and entitlement. I'm t that's what become. They want to be equals. And they, they are tired of being second-class citizens until it comes to divorce or child custody, so, and they're very happy to be second-class citizens. So you know, they're the back on uh, the prairie. They want their independence, <laughs> so you got to finance that. Right. Right. I, I, Thank you. You do. <laughs> yeah. you, have to, you have to finance their independence. Now, what, what, what happens now with you and her? Uh, Ooh. Me, me and the ex? Yeah. The uh, ex-wife? Uh, uh, I, I still uh, make uh, payments, which... Um, you have kids? No. No kids, no, no kid, house. No kid, no nothing. Let me tell you something. I went into this uh, divorce mm. with my paycheck, what I made on a weekly basis working at uh, WNEW uh, down the road. And it wasn't this ridiculous amount of money. It w and we didn't ha own anything. I, I, I leased a car. That was pretty much it. You would lease a car, and you guys had way less than 100 Gs in the bank, and she took that. But that should have been went, the end of story. It What's just the law here? went on and on and on, and, and, and for years, Mark, he, it went on with delays and postponements. And it, Mark, he's still paying, okay? To the point where I'm sitting there going, like, I can't do this anymore. Right. This has to end. You know, you know what I'm finding though that on a on a spiritual level, mm -hmm. spiritual level, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you believe in the devil. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> well, I always believed in the devil. Yeah. I just I just didn't know I was working for him for years. <laughs> But I, on a spiritual level, <laughs> you know, spiritual, you know, sometimes you know who your employer is. But on a spiritual level, I, you know, I've been really learning that, uh, you know, the things that make me happy are, are very simple and don't cost any money. Right. The <laughs> simple <laughs> things in life. Hey, with that, we got to take a break. We got Mark Marin in studio. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Thanks for saving me my job, Jimmy. Oh. Uh, it's the Opie and Anthony Show. We got Mark Marin in studio. He's flying out to Seattle. He's playing uh, Giggles, where? Friday Giggles, and Saturday. Okay. I'm taping a CD, and I, I'm, I'm honest with you, I have, I'm, I'm not that prepared, but I'm angry, and I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. So I think <laughs> I'm just looking for a CD that can never happen again. <laughs> right. That's the one I this want the, this time. The perfect all time kind of for like this. It. Right, right? Yeah. I, I think it's going to be a masterpiece. I hope so. It's, it's, I'm going to do the big crying closer, which you don't see as much as you used to. <laughs> the crying closer, nice. Uh, we're having fun today. Hey, um, little known fact, it was 10 years ago today that we did our mayor's prank up there in Boston. And, got us uh, thrown out of uh, Massachusetts. Boy, did it get us thrown out of Boston. And this is the first April Fool's we've worked since then. Um, companies and bosses have been very nervous to put us on the air. Uh, over the years, ever since that big prank we what did in Boston. What was that? I'm sorry. I was uh, probably well, sleeping. they are a little nervous <laughs> us even talking about it today, but basically all right. we told all of Boston that the mayor died in a car accident. It was uh, 
It was the younger well, version that, of the Opie and Anthony show. Today's that day. Yeah. Yeah. April oh, Fool's. April Fool's. Happy birthday, Craig. It's my brother's birthday. I oh. Better, oh. I better call him. You Thank better. God you reminded so, me. So, speaking of that, I bring it to everyone's attention because uh, stupid W-E-E-I, Dennis and Callahan, uh, taking a little shot at us today, eh? This just went down Everybody a little while is. ago. So we're out of time. We can't, we can't do our, our top ten uh, April Fool's jokes quickly. of all time. The mayor's dead. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, the mayor's live, alive, kicking. He's health, happy, healthy. Uh, out riding his bike every morning. I'm not going to give you ten. I'm going to give you like three or four out of the top ten April Fool's hoaxes of all time. Whatever happened to those idiots that said the mayor was dead? They're oh, gone. They're like working at that McDonald's yeah, with the child, with the child molester. Yep. What are they saying? Really? See more. Excuse me, douche. We're at the in the number one market on <laughs> FM radio. We're syndicated to major cities, and we're on uh, XM satellite radio. So we're heard all over Canada douche. and, and where, America. And where is this ass heard that I've never heard of his name? More dishonesty from radio guys. Dennis and Callahan at W E E I. I guess they want to know where Opie and Anthony are, well, guys. Hey, fans. Hey. hey, everyone listening to the Opie and Anthony show. Call. The their stupid, worthless show and tell them where we are, what we're doing, and throw in uh, the C word uh, C-word. while you're at it. And who, who cares? And, which, which and, and male C pictures. Male C pictures and, and the C word. Yes. And the female them, C word. Mail them pictures of men's genitals because they uh, look to me like the type of gentleman that would probably enjoy that. And there are Dennis and Callahan in uh, Boston. That We're up against them in Boston. Are we? So uh, are really? We really? Up against them? I don't think really? so. Are we really? These guys are defending a corner. You're defending the country. That's yeah, exactly. right. <laughs> where are they? At a McDonald's? Uh, are you are you stupid, out of touch, jackass? Look, just stay in your stay in your own little market. Just stay there. Get you carve out your little niche, and and ignore everything else that's happening in the business you're in. But they know they're lying. They do know it's dishonesty. Radio guys are filled with dishonesty. Get they, that they, douche on the know. phone. Not only do they know a lot about us, they know about our entire careers. Uh, we're on. In Boston, and they know that. Yeah, of course. They might even know that they're going to get a lot of attention today. This means <laughs> war. It's never. See, see, people are under this misconception that getting attention from us is good. It's the <laughs> worst thing possible. Our fans are despicable bastards. Right, Maxwell? Yeah, you enjoyed the attention, yeah. didn't you, Maxwell? Let Maxwell, who's, who's kept his mouth shut recently, because we uh, the the pests have done nothing but but. Just slam him. Relentless. They're still pounding him that he can't do his own show. Because our, our pests just get, uh, tie up his phone lines. Yeah. Whatever uh, happens to oh, those. What happens- do we got? Another. Uh, Look at this curmudgeon douche. I love whatever happened to those idiots. I don't know. We, we, ride the, we rode the publicity right into New York City radio yeah. and into syndication. You know, it's weird, too, because people don't realize that <laughs> radio this guy. Hold on is a own world, man. Hold on, Mark. Yeah. Jimmy is taking a, a look at uh, good old John Dennis. Oh, what a Now, cool. we openly admit we're not uh, we're not lookers for the most part, but wow, look at this guy. <laughs> Just what a... <laughs> wow, look at this guy. He's wearing a sweater vest. What a fruit. Yeah, he's got no choice but to do regional radio. Uh, John yeah. Dennis, this is his bio. The blizzard of 78 was a year away, and John Havlicek was still playing basketball for the Celtics when John Dennis embarked on the Boston portion of his broadcasting career. So he started before Boston in the 70s, and no one still knows who you are. Yeah. You're still <laughs> you, you fledgling nobody. And you're a nobody. <laughs> no one knows who you are. And every 30 years. Every guy that's in radio wants to go to a bigger city, wants to be heard by more people, wants to be syndicated, and it never happened for John Dennis. Here comes Nick Carter. Nick, how are you, sir? You got a little something on uh, Dennis Nick. and Callahan? Yeah, oh my God, I couldn't even. You, there's only 10 minutes of show left. But in, <laughs> in terms of John Dennis, he used to be a big time TV sportscaster. Really? Oh. He was on, I think, Channel 7. Okay, failed jock. Is that what I'm being uh, led to believe here? Failed uh, you know, jock? Well, all I know is now, like, he was like Mr. Like, square jaw TV guy, but he just let himself go. He's like, he looks like... <laughs> Yeah, stir fried ass. <laughs> well, let's. Well, I think the pests have a mission. What's what's the numbers there, Jimmy? You got something? Yeah, it's a W E E I A M, which is obviously a big station. Amplitude modulation, my Whoa! friends. Nice. 888-525-0850. 888-525-0850. And don't make sure when you call that you're respectful. Don't assault the call screener with the C bomb. 
Don't get on the air and drop f bombs because that will really hurt their show. Yeah, that would we be really, want, really bad. Just let them know with the oh, yeah. Anthony show wound up. <laughs> yeah, that would be really bad. Don't just, make fun of the fact just, that he went to Kent State and just missed it by a couple of years, which should have happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't mention any of that stuff. Uh, and once again, this is why like I'm not going to give you ten. I'm going to give you like three or four out of the top ten April Fool's hoaxes of all time. Whatever happened to those idiots that said the mayor was dead? They're gone. They're like Whack. working at that McDonald's yeah, with the child, are, with the child molester. McDonald's. Can you believe the dishonesty? Well, working well, at that McDonald's, McDonald's with the child molester. Well, hey working guys, at that McDonald's. Hey guys, WEI is asking where we went, so I think you really need to tell them where we went. Yeah, what's the number one more time, Iraq? 888 525 And I want phone calls around the clock. Everybody suffers. Everybody. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Take them down. Everyone suffers. And don't give them a chance to say, oh, well, a couple of people called. Yeah. Just instant barrage. Shock and awe and I was on the here. phones. I was here when the war began. I remember yeah. April 1st. You're right here. April 1st. That war that lasted in radio for 19 years until that <laughs> fellow in Boston dropped dead on the air. <laughs> Started the day I was there. Mark, this yep. is, I hate to tell you, but this is one of many wars we're fighting. <laughs> Or we our our troops are spread thin at this point. You know, I don't know how the hell. You know, it's like I wish I could listen to you, you but I get up. It, it, people always ask me, "Did you read that blog? Did you listen to that show? Did you go on YouTube?" It's like, dude, I am so old school, man. And so I get up and I just sit oh. there, and it's all dread, panic, revenge yeah. fantasies for me. <laughs> it, you know, masturbation. I don't know how people find the time, right? Yeah, you know, to get out of their own heads long enough to even indulge themselves in entertainment. <laughs> uh, but uh, we got some more. The intel is already coming in, which is wonderful, Anthony. Brian in Boston, listening on BCM. Uh, what's up, Brian? Hey, I just want to tell you guys, uh, if you want to call them, it's just pound W-E-I from Verizon phone, too. So you can go oh. on that line, too. Is it a free call if you do pound W-E-E-I? Oh, yeah. So All Verizon right. phone users, <laughs> the uh, assassins pound have been awakened. W -E -E -I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mark, you have no idea. There are Opie and Anthony cells around the country. You they, have no They are no snapping into action, crawling out of bed, having their first nine cigarettes. That's right, <laughs> fixing their mullets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These guys uh, in radio with their dishonesty, it just, it's just... I went to... I was in Tampa. It's unbelievable. I was in Tampa, and yeah. I go to do a show, right? And you know me. I got to talk. I get to the show, and the guys are like, yeah, we're going to put you on after the news for three minutes. And I'm, I'm t said to the person who brought me, I'm like, let's get out of here. Yeah. What am I going to do in three yeah. minutes? And then I hear the guy go, so what happened to Air America? Yeah. So, like, there's a vindictive, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah. you take a shot at yeah. me. We, and, mm. and then I started talking to him, and he's we, like, oh, I'll give you six. And and we <laughs> openly admit it, because it's the 10-year anniversary, we blew up our careers in Boston because New York was calling. We admitted that. Yep. You know, we knew exactly what we were doing. So we took call. meetings in New York before you, we got fired. A month before we were fired, we were in WNEW meeting with the program director I, saying, I don't know, we're under contract. I would love to live here and, and work in New York, but we're under contract and, in uh, uh, Boston. And I want to make it perfectly clear, the NEW people did nothing wrong. They're like, it's really too bad you're in uh, contract because we would hire you tomorrow. And I'm like, well, I think we could. Yeah. I, I said Anthony actually in the train back to Long it's Island. Like, yeah, like, I think we could fix that. <laughs> I think this could be fixed. I think this could be fixed. Believe me. And, and so, we, we so tried numerous things, and the mayor thing uh, really worked like a charm. So continue saying that it was a stupid prank, and we blew up our careers, and we're working where? At a convenience store or something? Mc, McDonald's. McDonald's. We're McDonald's. at McDonald's. We're now at McDonald's. Yeah, and when you take an action like that where you sabotage your career for a better opportunity, just from personal experience, make sure you have that offer lined up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You hear that, Rick, you uh, dope? Uh, so, W-E-E-I, what, what is it again, uh, 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 Jimmy? We want we want phone calls around the clock. But again, Everyone suffers. No profanity, because that's only going to wreck their show. 1-888-525-0850. <laughs> because they probably don't have a lot of delay. It's, just, it's like an AM yeah, station. I'm that, sure. They don't have a, a nine-minute dump button like and, this idiot. No, show. no. And let me tell you how dishonest these guys are. There was a recent article in uh, the uh, the, uh, what, uh, the the Inside Track with the, the manatees. We the call them the manatees. Fatties. These fat slobs that uh, write the gossip column for the Boston Herald. And there was an article about there's a rumor going around that those two were going to be replacing us on BCN. Right. So they know exactly who we are. And they where the we are. the same article as us. I lived in Boston for eight years. I was, brought, I was in Boston for a long time, yeah. and BCN used to sponsor 
the the comedy competition sure. that started my career actually. Yeah, Mark Parento yes. was the guy, <laughs> and and yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I tried to spray paint you black. <laughs> hey. and you. Well, yeah, he did, he did actually. Mark Parento. But I thought it was just improv. Hey, uh, hey, <laughs> why don't you? Hey. I got a PlayStation for you, kid. Come in, <laughs> into my van. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, Mark Marin's in studio. Yeah. I, hey, Mark, yeah. I dropped the cart. Can you bend over yeah, and yeah. pick that up for me? Oh yeah. That, no, that sounds exactly like him. That's the way. Uh, Who's the guy in the morning? Then you that bend over a little more. I'm going to tell everybody how funny you are, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, who's? I'm who, getting the creeps now. Who's doing morning? Feels like the beginning of my career. Charles Lackwood. Charles, Charles, Charles. Lack of Talent. Blaming those Glasscock. And we used to call him Charles Lack of Talent. Remember Charles that? Charles Lack of Talent. Him, <laughs> used to drive him nuts. And then when we did the the mayor's prank, he couldn't wait to get on TV and like just completely destroy us. But my favorite has always been Lon and Wally. <laughs> All right. I listen to Lon and Wally on the way home every day. It's a wonderful program while I'm making right hand turns because I can't make a left. Can't. Can't. Longer. That's, That's my uh, ex mother in law. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is a quickie, and I'd really want to do something about this today, but we ran out of show. Jimmy was talking yesterday how he's convinced eventually mm. cigarettes will be banned, right, Jimmy? I, I think eventually they will find a way, yes. Well, there's an article. In the future. Yeah. There's an article in the Daily News, and I think we're years away from that, Jimmy. Uh, cigarettes are going up again. No wanted, throwing cigarette butts out of Mark? your flying cars. I, I quit, uh, quit smoking cigarettes. How much do you think a pack of cigarettes is going to be uh, going up to? $80,000. Uh, $10. $10. <laughs> no. Pretty close. $9 a pack, my God. friends. That's why $9. cigarettes are not going away anytime let's float soon. The, let's float the economy on the back of the weak and addicted. <laughs> they have no health care. They're going to die anyways. They're grist for the mill. Wow. You should uh, be a politician. <laughs> people, are begging, sense. people are begging that we uh, attack the big show that's on WEEI at 2. We're, nice. we're talking around the clock, Across people. the board. Because they said whatever happened to those guys. So we're going to make it perfectly clear what happened Let to them us. know. Hey, uh, so listen to this, though. Cigarettes are going to go up to just under $9. Now, the wholesale average is $2.28. Listen to all the taxes they got on this damn thing. Nick Red, very good. Federal cigarette tax, that'll, that'll cost you $0.39 cents per pack, okay? Then you got the average retailer markup. They mark it up $1.42 for you. Then you got the new doubled state cigarette tax, which will be $3 a pack. Then you got the state sales tax, which is uh, tax, which is $0.22. Cents. And then finally, you got the city cigarette tax. If you're buying cigarettes in New York City, that's another $1.50. Right, wow. and then if you admit you smoke, you can't get health coverage. So there, that insurance company saves a fortune. So when you spent all your money on cigarettes and you're broke and your lungs are rotting, <laughs> all you got for coverage is God. Good luck. <laughs> God. Yeah. So that's, w that's, that's why it's interesting you said that yesterday, Jimmy. There's no way they're going to ban this anytime soon with the money it's bringing in. They are getting a lot of tax money, but I'm telling you, the lobby behind uh, uh, anti-smoking is very strong. You're still off, right? Uh, yeah, man. I've been off since December of 2001. I remember when you quit. Yeah, man. It was uh, Estee at the Cellar helped me a lot. She marched me over and got me on the patch immediately, and that saved me. And that I, was I'm, I'm chewing nicotine gum now because I get strung out on cigars. I don't even like, I'm not a cigar guy, but man, to sit there for an hour and just get a nice steady stream of nicotine, yeah. mm -hmm. but then you're going to get my mouth right. Rotted, yeah. whatever. That scares me. <laughs> I go on and off. Me. They do. Yeah, because I know I'll get. I love the nicotine rush. Oh Christ! I'm going to leave here afraid of cigars and afraid of women. All right, we got to wrap up. Here's the deal. <laughs> uh, a lot of people thought it was an April Fool's joke, but it really isn't. Jose Canseco is running late. Uh, we got to talk to him on the other side of the show today. Yes. Sorry for the people that don't have the XM. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's a but, missed uh, flight. It's not a missed planned. flight and all. Well, actually, but then he did Letterman last night, so maybe he was celebrating that no, last no, no. night. But that's exactly what it was. It was a missed flight that pushed all of his press. Oh, okay. And backed everything up. That's and why. then we got Mark Marin. Uh, he's going to be at Giggles in Seattle this weekend, taping his last CD before he offs himself. So that's uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> wow. That's going to be a collector's item, though, Mark. You're yeah, going to live on, just like my book is. You can get it for a dollar thirty-nine on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> Mark's a great comic. In I love here. Mark, man. Yeah, I was scared Seattle. of Mark. When I first met him, I used to uh, see him at the Comedy Cellar a lot. I'm like, wow, this guy really stands out. And then I went and saw him at comics, and man, what a, just a brilliant comic, really. Thanks, man. And really, love, really good stuff. And I love Mark, because him and Louis C.K. were the first two really established New York guys to treat me nice. And Colin. The and three, Colin. Three first, yes. Two so, out of three is uh, not bad. Giggles uh, in New York City, uh, in uh, Seattle this weekend, Friday and Saturday. And once again, Dennis and Callahan of WEEI in Boston. doesn't matter if you're listening in another city. They asked a question today. Whatever happened to those what? What was the quote? Dopes? Idiots? Yeah. Idiots. Idiots. Well, our fans are going to let them know exactly what happened to us. We want phone calls around the clock. 888-525-0850. Have fun with that one, manatees. They'll be uh, writing about that one. All right, guys.
<laughs> April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Oh, by the way, the the attack is not an April Fools joke because you know. Yeah. We do talk to a lot of dummies every day. We really want you to do that. Yeah. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. See ya. Here we are at XM Satellite Radio, patiently waiting for Jose Canseco to come through that fine door of ours. Of ours. Uh, we got Mark Marin. He made the walkover to continue uh, bitching about women. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'd, I'd like some advice, though. It's going through a tough time. Yeah. I'm going to ask you guys for advice. That's how bad off I am. <laughs> hey, we are the, uh, the purest, probably most honest people you can ask. You know, well, yeah, we, you scared the hell out of me. You don't have an agenda I, or anything. Yeah, you know, I thought I was feeling better this morning. I'm like, I'm excited. I'm going to go down there. I talked to you for 10 minutes about divorce, and now I'm like, I'm done. But I like how you were saying uh, you know, your hope is diminishing. Because well, that, that is a good thing. You don't want hope. Well, I have no hope of us ever being you know, friends or, or, or the marriage Oh, yeah, that's, continuing. that should go out the window immediately. But, but I had some hope that there would be some closure or resolution to this Dude. process. It goes on and on for a while. Well, and uh, the best advice I could give you is, no matter what, don't, don't let it really take hold and just dominate your life. It, just, it happens it did in that moments. For, for three years for me, it, it was nothing but an all-consuming mess that I just couldn't I'd wake up in the morning boom there it was right well that's what some days are better than others you know it's not like it's it's almost like this thing like some sort of universal force that I have yeah. no control over because you know she's just a person and I know where she lives I know where she hangs out yeah and there's part of the things like I'm going to go appeal to her better side I'm going to yeah. go stalk her like a reasonable <laughs> person confront her in a <laughs> coffee shop and demand that she'd show me her better side and cut this crap out. Oh, man, it does it. The I lawyer know. already gave her the speech that this might be coming. <laughs> yeah, lawyers, lawyers are Think of everything. The, just the scum. Well, I can tell when she's talking and her lawyer's talking. Like yeah. she's, She said to me, and so, well, you know what? I, I, now I'm concerned about details, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But there, there was this moment. Look, you know, it's been... It, I'm a comedian. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, I'm in show business. Yeah. I'm not a doctor. Some years are better than others. And it just... The whole whole thing to me is just sad because I was honest, she left me, mm -hmm. and now I'm the asshole. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's just At like... At least it, you're finally... Get, you got yeah. it right. Right. But, it's about but, time. But there are those moments where, like, you, you want it, you just... It's the same moment when they leave. I, I mean, you know, what? I, I don't know how dramatic it was for you, but you know, I thought things were okay. I thought things were... You know, I know I have an anger problem. You know, I know that... You know that that it was difficult, yeah. But I was trying. But you know, in its best moments, when you're in a relationship, you think you have some semblance of control. You don't. You don't really, you know, entertain the idea that they just can take their vagina and leave, and, <laughs> and then, then you pick it up with them and go. Right. Yeah. And then you're going to stand there going, "Wait, is, oh, we're married. Isn't half of that vagina mine? Don't I have any say?" They, I think, have dibs on the whole vagina. Right. And you don't want a, a vagina that doesn't like you no, in the house. But no. But the horrible thing is that there was. Uh, I don't even remember if I talked about this because I'm over this stuff, as you can tell. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm past this stuff. But now it, it's just I did everything I was supposed to do. I did it right in this party. It's like I want to be rewarded for being honest in this oh, process. Oh no, you, you'll be punished. <laughs> you'll be punished severely I, I, oh for. Oh my God. I There's, guess I'm being naive. There's so much to learn. We'll I know, talk, I, but this is not the lesson I wanted you to got, learn. You Divorce got, court is bizarre world. It's just everything's backwards. The nicer you are, the worse you'll be treated. Uh, it's just, it's a horrible uh, thing to have to go through. My, fourth, my first divorce, I had no money. I just, you know, I gave her half of the, you know, the take from the book. And, you, just and said, I left her. You, you just said first divorce? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you married again? Yeah. Okay, I can't even talk to you. But have you? I, I loved her. Even, I loved her. Didn't you? You liked her. We. I mean, it doesn't matter if you you, you love. Uh, you, there's no second marriages. God, what what, what there love can't becomes? Be. What love becomes, dude? I mean, I, you know, because there was that period, man, where she was she was still getting the mail at my house, right? She yeah. leaves me, but she's still getting her mail and her shit still at the house, and and she would come over to get the mail. You know, and this one I'm hanging on to hope. So you know, you oh, you know she's coming over to get the mail. So yeah. you're you know you're combing oh, your hair. Oh, you know you're brushing your teeth. Yeah, you're yeah, brushing your teeth. You're putting the, the oh, good shoes oh, on. God, you know, I want to slap you yeah, when yeah, you're, you're holding, like this. You're holding your belly in. Oh, yeah. Oh, and God. she comes over to get the mail. <laughs> yeah. And this is why. But this is a woman I was in love with, man. Yeah. I mean, I left a woman. I left a marriage for this woman, and and I loved her, and I would have done anything for her, right? But here's what it becomes. You know, she comes over for mail, and then you start getting into this thing where she's, like, leaving. I'm like, so, you know, I mean, 
You want to? You know, oh, you, you want to spark up a conversation? No, no I want to fuck her. Yeah. Well, oh boy. Unfortunately, she's picking up the mail and going home to another mail. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> kind of spelt a little See, different. I don't, even, but I don't even want to believe that. You don't want to think that. You're not I'm ready not, to believe that one yet. I don't know that that's true. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Oh man, you guys. How long you been? Uh, you really want to hang with us today? But all I'm saying. I'm saying we have a little sense. experience with this. We've been yeah. talking about this, this is, subject for off and on for 10 years. This is somebody that I was in love with and that I was, you know, a, a, a head over heels. And what it becomes is that she's picking up her mail and I'm saying, you know, come on. You know, and here's the thing. If you're a woman and, and, and I've asked women this in clubs and I said, how many times have you, have you fucked a guy that you broke up with? And, you know, you get a good good amount of people. Uh -huh. And I say, well, the, the ones that don't, you know, you, you are the worst type of woman. I mean, do us a favor. <laughs> You know, I mean, after you break up with us, I mean, just fuck us occasionally. Is that wrong? Oh, boy. Uh, that's, um, that's not a good idea. Well, no. here's the saddest part about it. Is this the person you love, and she's coming over to get her mail, and it gets it's sort of like, hey, well, just for old times. I mean, mm. I think, don't you still feel it? Whatever. You know, and it got to this point where, you know, I just remember, you know, proposing to her, telling her how much I love her, uh, and then it gets to me oh, where Jesus. she's walking out with a memories. bundle of mail, oh, boy. a bundle oh, of mail, and I'm saying, come on, just help me. She's oh, like, I don't think that'd be a good no. idea. And I'm like, oh, and then, this is what happened. I'm like, Can, will you just show me your ass and let me jerk oh, off? Oh, no. So oh, that's, I say that? Yeah. Oh, I love you. So, so that's, that's, what, oh. that's what love becomes. She's like, you really want to do that? I'm like, I, yeah, I kind of do. Just show oh. me your ass and let me jerk oh, off. That's yeah. a good Did you do that? Did you do the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life? Life. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, and she said no, and I'm like, well, I'm still gonna do it, you know. So it, it was it was pathetic, but but what it was, it is still what it gonna is. jerk off to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could can't you stop me. Could you that show was... me your ass while I jerk? Yeah. <laughs> How great is That's that great. Oh. But but the thing, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Oh. Yeah, comics are a special <laughs> breed, aren't we? Oh, but, boy. But that's the, that's the weird thing is that 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 was the, as romantic as I could be at that moment. Right. In that moment of desperation, all I had. Was that? Wow! Those were the options. That's tough. That's great, bro. I could have just said bye. You know, I hope you didn't get any bad mail. Yeah. But no, I'm like, please, just let me. I'll let me jerk off to your ass. Oh wow! And that does show women, though, when you like when you, when you, when it's all boiled down, that is what they are. Please just let me look at your hiney while I fucking come on myself and then take your mail and have a drunk driving action. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mark Marin is in studio. He's playing Mark. giggles in Seattle this weekend and, 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 and uh, recording his last CD. Yeah, maybe the last before he <laughs> puts not, a gun in his mouth. I'm look, I you know, I don't want to because I have found that, you know, suicidal ruminations, uh, despite the fact uh, you know, it's all very well and dramatic. You know, I, I I'm not depressed. You know, I just sometimes I think about suicide. I don't want to kill myself. It just makes no. me feel better to know that I can if I have to. Yeah. There's nothing wrong it's with that. Got options there. But, I, I guess. but you know, you go in and out of that. You know, right? You were you were going through this. I mean, uh, there, there are moments where you're so tied up with the pride, with the money idea, with the feeling of of not having any control of the situation, where you know your self pity gets the best of you, and you're just like, fuck it. No, fuck I it. went the other way. I it was it. Went, it was rage. Yeah, I was more like, no, not I was going to kill her. But I wished, n like, natural or just accidental death on people. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't go out and think, oh, my God, I want to literally kill that person because I didn't want to end up in prison or anything like that. But I was like, you know something? I wouldn't shed a tear over a car wreck or uh, a bolt of lightning. I, I was so enraged with utter and sheer hatred. Of another human being. It's weird, you know. It's like I'm. I'm ashamed to say, especially in in uh, in, in in present company, in the presence of men. Yeah, yeah. That. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and believe me, this is the only show I can talk about this mm -hmm. shit on. You know, because uh, you, know, you know, to some people, you know, I'm still a, a beacon of liberal and progressive thought. Sure. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, do, I do have that part of me, but I have to indulge this other thing because the 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 man in me has been awakened. Right. With the uh, the horrendous pain and resentment towards the uh, members of the opposite sex. Yes. Yeah, that in, in all honesty, I don't know. If it's by virtue of the fact that you know, yeah, I've been sober for a while, but uh, you know, I, I don't I, I don't resent. Her. Mm -hmm. I resent this process that she listened to vindictive cunts. And <laughs> Thank you. Yes. They, who got into her head. Because I know my wife. I know who she is. I was with her a long time. And she was I, brainwashed well, by not her to, friends and lawyers. She was angry at me for taking actions I took after she left me and after I filed for after divorce. After she left you. That's remember right. that. She That's left, key. And I do remember that. And I know that uh -huh. she, in, in my heart that she wasn't coming back. And, and I know that people got into her head and said, here's how you do it. Because the things she said to me you know, in, in the encounters we've had. It didn't sound like her. 
right? Well, it, it still isn't it's her. Like, it doesn't it's sound like, like her now. It's being filtered through her, but it's a lawyer or some bitch friend or some shit. This is how you hurt him. You know, this is how this is how right. you get back. Here's how you get him. That's right. And in and the thing that kills me is that despite the fact that I may I, I may have had a little anger problem, which I do and I gotta deal with it, but I you know, I have to be honest with you. I gotta be honest with you. You know, you know, after she left, my anger problem got much better. Really? Now, wow. Yeah. Well well of course, I mean if you have no one to complain to or yell at, you're gonna yell and complain less, right? I mean well, when you do that true. by you mm-hmm. can do that by yourself, then you're looking silly. Yeah, you're, you're, you're <laughs> yeah, an idiot. <that's> silly. <laughs> so uh but 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 in my heart the thing is is that um I just, you know, I just, uh, I, I don't even know what the hell I'm saying. You know, the fucking thing is about love is what are you going to do? I guess it'll just be, it's going to take a little while longer. A to little. Hard, at to least two or three I more like years. seeing this, though, years. because let me tell you something. Last time you were in, yeah. you were at a different place. No, yeah, in no, In this no. process. Yeah. Now it's, it's refreshing to see you in this place. You know it's what, better. You're progressing. You know what that means? You're, He's banging young broads. You're going on. Now, here you go, my yeah, friend. Right. This is what you need to do immediately. Yeah. Young girls. Okay. Let me just uh, lay it out there for you. Okay. You are now opened Hold up on, let me get a to the wonderful world <laughs> yeah. of youth. Yeah. Well, I find that I'm at that age now where you know, it seems that the 25 is... Uh, I'm 40. Is that your, is that your, uh, well, no, your I'm baseline there? I'm just saying what I'm... Told, I'm Mark. just saying what I'm... Talk to Anthony. I'm is that your saying, baseline? <laughs> that's not my baseline. That's, that seems to be what, what is coming at me without working too hard. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, so you don't want to... You know, if you're just out, then those girls will come up to you. A little bit. You put a little, a little effort bad. into it. They're like, you, you can just, get that age down to 20, 20 you drive it down to <laughs> fucking junior high. <laughs> well, you know, I have just found that in, in all honesty, in, in my life, yeah. you know, I, I don't, I, I, I generally see what, what comes towards me, and I, mm-hmm. I've grown to find that women who, who are attracted to me, no matter what age, they're, they're, they're smart, they're funny, they're cute, and deep down they resent every member of my gender. And somehow or another, <laughs> somehow or another, I'm going to have to pay for that. But it, it could be in a day, it could be in a week, it could be in eight years. But eventually, the problem, fellas, is that, uh, here's the big problem, all women, uh, uh, they have fathers. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you are going to pay... For whatever that father did or didn't do. <laughs> wow, holy fuck. To whatever fuck. extent they didn't do it. has said that for years. Dude, I, and I, I, when I, I'm a guy. I don't know how many more times i got to stick my cock into a hurricane. I don't know how many <laughs> more times. But if I look into her eyes and there's nothing but flying debris, <laughs> okay, I will be like, I'm putting my raincoat on and I'm going in there. And there's, you know, there's, there's Barbie parts flying around camp counts where it's Miss Brides. You know, and, they, and you know, daddy said he was coming and I'm in there. God, With two things it. that look like jumper cables wandering around in a, in a, in a storm saying, where's the broken daddy box? I'm going to plug directly into it, and I'll just hang on for as long as possible. Oh, my yeah. God. You nailed it. Can I jump in real fast? My ex, oh. my ex uh, you know, Father's Day would come along, and all of a sudden she's like a, an emotional wreck. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong? It's Father's Day. Because it reminds her of when Daddy left. Right. And then all of a sudden, we're just going about our lives, and all of a sudden, I wake up one morning, she's crying uncontrollably. I'm like, what What happened on this date with Daddy? That's, well, that, that's, the, thing. That, that's the game I would play with the her. Day that my- uh, today, it's his birthday. Right. <laughs> my wife, my, the day, and this is, the, this is the God honest truth. The day she said... You know what? I'm getting along with my father a lot better. It was fucking over. You know what I mean? Like when she yeah. started watching football because her dad watched football. When I saw my wife sitting on the couch oh, shit. going, go, go. I'm like, what just happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is Who's in my house? You know, and that was and, and that was the beginning of the end. And she's exactly like her father. Here's uh, my ex's story, yeah. which I should have known uh, right immediately. Off right off the bat. <laughs> Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, I love this story. <laughs> he leaves the family <laughs> on Christmas Day. Hold on, man. I need this. <laughs> he leaves the family. Sometimes you don't want to pay for presents. Goes off. <laughs> goes off and starts a brand new family from scratch. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm from scratch. Day. And completely forgets about the other family he had. Men are unbelievable. I we? step into this fucking situation... <laughs> thinking everything is going to be hunky-dory, and you are absolutely right. You will pay for the sins of the father, and, and y- y- you don't know when it's coming, but it is. And, and now my last ex 
uh, which is very recent. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but, uh, 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 you know, she just recently picked up and left. Uh, that one. God, it's fucking awful. That one, uh, her mom, who now that uh, I'm broken up with, uh, with her, is just a fucking cunt. Who? My her ex-girlfriend's mom. mother. Yeah, I fucking hate her. Uh, anyway. Wow, breaking a- news. Anyway. anyway. I'm sitting up. Anyway. I was leaning back too far. Uh, Wait, th- why this is, one can, had, Hold on. Can, I, huh? I don't, I, I, why is she a uh, just, just a word? You know something? When I've dealt with her over this many years, um, there's just her personality, her, her uh, 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 connivingness, uh... The the uh, rather work it's swindling someone than actually work for a fucking living. Oh, dude, yeah. Just, just, I, I fucking grit my teeth thinking how many times I had a smile at her when I wanted to hit her in the face with a fucking shovel. <laughs> Hate her! Always did. So, th- so you always did, and Since now you can finally day say it. Fucking one. Wow, you put on a good face, my Since friend. Since I, I did. I've hung out Give socially me my in that situation with you a few times, and it looked like you guys all got along, like you were. Give me my fucking Academy Award. <laughs> you got to play along, because I fucking did it yeah. for the relationship. Why? What? What was the worst thing she did to you? If you could say, I don't even know. Said hello. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Anything. You just got a Dude. sense. You got a Dude. sense right away. There was a complete lack of any appreciation of anything that uh, I would do, helping out, well, family-wise, which, uh, that, just this... It's a known fact this, that Anthony is very generous and, and helped out a lot of people uh, in in your last relationship. And her past track record of uh, uh, relationships uh, uh, and hatred of men and, and swindling uh, people out of uh, uh, various uh, goods and things is just uh, legendary. But that's what um, they all become once you start but, the divorce process. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, tell me about it. That's what they do. Believe me. Um, but uh, the, she had, you know, three kids with three different men. This uh, is the woman you were dating. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't a red flag. And one, no, 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 okay, no, 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a fucking sex is mom. wife with a kid. I date kids. I don't <laughs> fucking have women with them. He fuck kids. I don't have women with him with the kids. Backwards I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, home early. But uh, the uh, <laughs> the um, uh, the father. So the father wasn't in her life either for right. many many years. Right. You know, he had a, a drug problem, an alcohol problem, apparently. Uh, but he got over that. I'd met him, and he seemed like a nice enough guy and everything. I had never had a problem with him. But being out of the life so long, there it is again. Maybe a father issue. I don't fucking know. I'm no shrink. But for some reason, I always hook up with girls that have, that have no issues. fucking fathers. I like it because I don't have to deal with a fucking father. But it, it, there's something there. Look, it, 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 you know what? I've been doing a lot of research on this. Just at home on my couch by myself with Hater. no book. With no books. <laughs> wait, can, wait Mark. Can you hold yeah. my thought? I'm sorry. Because sorry. Sorry. Well, you have no idea what he just did here today. Big time. Because mm. I'm not. I was thinking in my dopey head that there might be a a slight chance yeah. that, that the door is uh, slightly open with him and uh, his ex. And I I do believe that door no, is no, officially no, no. shut. I, in my I don't. Eyes. I don't go back to exes. I don't go back to exes. Even if they come to and say, I never Look, have. here's a present. None of that? Nothing. No, oh. I don't go back to exes. Well, Jose can't take it. I was walking Jose, in. Jose, what's up, buddy? There it is. Saved by the bell. We're talking about uh, uh, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends. Ex-lives. Uh, di- ex-wives. That's a good way to they're, they're it. Mo- their mothers. Divorces. Maybe maybe the book. mother-in-laws. The friggin' uh, families. The, the crap. He looks like Rick Delgado on steroids. Much Jose. better looking. Than That's what Rick <laughs> looked like at NEW. <laughs> Rick Delgado on steroids. Uh, yeah, so Mark Marin, he's a, a comedian friend of ours. He's oh, going yeah. through a How little doing, divorce Mark? thing. And when you going through a divorce right now? Yeah, I am. Ant's I am. Poor guy. I went through half. it. Can you help me in any way? <laughs> poor guy. Can you bring half. it back? Half. Yeah. Ant's, well, being, Ant's still going through a divorce uh, thing. No, I went through it. It's over. I just well, got to Well, he's still pay. writing some checks. I still got to pay. Which are going to yeah. end soon, by the way. How many yeah, you had? Thank God. Two. Uh, two so divorces? I'm, so I'm an expert. Two divorces. Oh. Did, did, any, did anything go your way in either of them? Not even close. Well, well, let me rephrase that. My second wife couldn't break my prenuptial, so that went well at least. Oh, okay. But she tried. She tried. Oh, yeah. And legal fees? Up the ass, right? Mm, no, not really, because I had an ironclad prenup, so it was... Oh, uh, good. It was pretty clean. See, that's what you yeah. need. 
And I'm clapping up enough to protect my ten dollars. Believe me, you never yeah, know. I have, you ten dollars. You know? Look at me. I was a fucking tin knocker. Yes. I was making twenty eight thousand dollars a year, and I I marry this uh, woman, and then uh, I become a fucking radio guy uh, making call it some a radio good superstar. change. Call it okay, a radio. I become a radio superstar. Radio superstar. <laughs> making a pretty good chunk of change. I didn't know when I was making twenty eight grand knocking tin crawling in people's attics that I would need a prenup, but believe me. If you're fucking doing, no matter what you do, you should get a goddamn prenup before you get married because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. How awkward well, how do is they live with themselves? What's that? How awkward is it presenting a prenup? Like, look, I love you, I want to spend my life with you, but uh, before we consider that, I don't well, want to get fucked easy. when we split up. It's easy when you're already married once and your first wife took half. Yeah. But is the second so, one well, the easy. is the second one annoyed that you want the prenup? But Jose, like we're she in understands. love. This shouldn't happen. Half. What? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? Well, no. She was. She was pretty. She was pretty. Yeah, cool pretty about cool it. about it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, they're up for the ride. They're. They, you know. They know what they're getting right. into. They're going to have a good time either way. All right. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. What yeah. kind of gun did you for hold? While. to had. <laughs> you had. Right. Come on. You son just pitched. He had Luca Brasi. Yeah, yeah. Luca Brasi made an offer. I'll kill you. Hey, speaking of uh, broads, it's a good uh, place to start. Uh, 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 baseball players and uh, women on the road. Jeez, mm. this is mm. terrible. Is that a bad place to start? No, it's a good place. I bet, I, uh, we have this theory when we see like uh, baseball players retire and they're crying their eyes out in front of everybody. We think it's not that they're going to miss the game. We think it's because they're going to miss the broads on the road and they're they're going to be stuck at home with their wife finally. And they, now they got to come up with excuses how to get back on the road so they can bang the broads. No, I think by that time you're just too old. You're in your 40s and you're gladly retired. You're but, fucked uh, out, kind of? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'll tell you, it was, uh, <laughs> in my heyday, it was pretty crazy. But what, was, kind of, uh, what kind yeah. of do you attract? I mean, uh, comics attract, uh, you don't even want to know. But like our, like our baseball groupies, like, I mean, are they lunatics? Are they scary? I guess, yeah. I mean, you attract all types. You yeah. attract the, the scary ones. The good what was the scariest one? Like, is it true that? <laughs> oh, is I'll it, tell you one that actually liked to be choked out while you were having sex. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was. I was like, I'm not touching you again. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you gotta try yeah, and kill you. You might kill her. <laughs> I love how he said again. That means he at least <laughs> said, I try once. I'll try this. <laughs> I tried it once, and after that, forget about it. Freak you out? Yeah, it was scary. Yeah. Yeah, because their eyes started rolling in her head, and it was like, whoa, wait a minute. You're doing the exorcist or what? It's be worse, worse than a prison again. Prison time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Wait, how how does she want me to squeeze her neck even harder? So I was like, what are you kidding me? Um, I got to go. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is with that? Would she tap out? Like, how, how would it go down? Would tap she say, out, like, you know, squeeze fighter. harder? I'm ready to come. Yeah, and her eyes started rolling in her head, and once I saw that, I was like, this is crazy. I'm out. Bye. No fun, huh? <laughs> no, it was it was it was crazy. It was it was. Wow, crazy. that's insane. The worst is when you think they want that and they don't. Well, that's a silly <laughs> explanation. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? <laughs> well, well, you're asking to die. I was saying, what can you tell us about the broads on the road, though? A lot of these guys have a, uh, a woman in every city. Well, I can just speak for myself, and you can imagine from there. But um, <laughs> I, you know, these women are throwing themselves at you. I mean, they get by security. Hmm. They find out what hotels you're at. As soon as you go in your door, they're in your room, literally. Uh -huh. um, they're waiting for you at the hotel bar. They're kind of, in, in a way, stalking you, trying to find out where you're at each each second. They're waiting for you after the game. And, of course, you're, at the time, the best player in the world, making a certain amount of salary and look a certain way. It's 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 just the inevitable. You know, they make it very easy. Do they have baseball cards and they go, fuck them, fuck them, blow them, fuck them, blow them, blow them, fuck them? Are they looking for relationships or just uh, to get off? Believe it or not, uh, a lot of them want relationships. Uh, at least they say that anyways. Wow. So you can't really figure out, you know, who's who, but, you know. Well, that's just the kind of woman you want, someone who stalked you at a bar in a hotel sure. in a strange city. Let's start dating and get romance. married. Have so, kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So when that story came out with A-Rod, uh, with that girl in Toronto, you weren't surprised, right? Absolutely not. Hmm. No, I mean, A-Rod's a good-looking guy. I mean, and when all is said and done, he's going to be worth probably $400 million, which is crazy, so. I, I, you know, I see women throwing themselves at him all the time. He may go out to a strip bar or club now and then. Yeah. Even these women who are married are just probably throwing themselves at him. And, you know, it becomes very, very difficult to say no at times. Do you like the guy or do you not like him? I don't like him. I don't like A.R. at all. I met him when he was very young. And like I said, he, uh, he looked at my wife at the time and said, wow, it's a beautiful woman. All of a sudden I find out later on that, you know, he's calling her and they're, they're maybe they hooked up or something. So wow. It was, it was kind of bad. This is the first wife? Second wife. Second wife. Yeah. So he's wow. a real pursuer. He didn't just flirt at a party. Oh, definitely. He pursued her, and I was think, he married at the time? 
I'm not sure about the time frame. I, th- I think he was. I what a prick. Was. God, you could go yeah. out there and just fucking grab yeah. any chick you want. That right. was about that's the, right. the, the dominating a male, though. Right. That wasn't that's right. about the woman. That was about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this to Jose Canseco. That's, yeah, that's an animal shit. It, it, it could have been. And, you know, Jessica, I don't know if you guys saw her in the Playboy. She was a drop-dead oh, yeah. gorgeous oh, woman. Yeah. Absolutely. So maybe that had part to do with it. But she was your woman. Right, she was my wife at the time. So that he just was doing some, you know, lion pack bullshit. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I like that analogy, lion pack. Well, <laughs> well, it looks like you got A-Rod by the balls at this point, because <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you're you claiming steroids with him. At least he uh, he looked into it. And, uh, yeah. And no. and he's not making a lot of noise because it's it sounds like you got like something in your back pocket that you're more than willing to use this guy Max that, well, that mean, is in your book right yeah I, I did introduce him to a one ounce steroid dealer and you know after that I don't know what happened I I, I kind of lost track of it but he's definitely not denying it so hmm. I'm I'm waiting for him to just you know fall in that bear trap and say Hose is a liar and I'm going to deny it and you're saying though if this gets uglier you have no problem naming who Max is right absolutely and then it would get uh, very interesting because now Max is going to be on the spot and he's going to probably say some things he'll just say the truth exactly what happened you're also defending like no, defending you're saying that Clemens uh, contrary to popular belief hmm. belief didn't do him um, the guy who was the guy McNamara Brian McNamara I think Brian, his name is yes. why. Like, are you just protecting a friend, or does he really, you really believe he didn't do it? Because this guy saved, like, uh, swatches and all this shit. Yeah. No, I'm just giving you the information that, that I've got. Um, that I think, especially in my, in my first book, or, or suspect that Roger Clemens used steroids? Absolutely. Um, do I have any evidence whatsoever that he did? No. So you're kind of like on the fence. Did he do it or didn't he do it? I always suspected him. I try to get information from him if he did, but I have no evidence at all. So do you feel like the the players have they like do they hate you? I mean, are you hated by players or do some of them kind of like, hey, we like what you're doing because we didn't do it? Um, what's the reaction from players? Serpico? Are you Serpico? Well, yeah, <laughs> right, I mean, right. e- yeah, yeah. Even even if some of the players do like me, they can't say it because if they're associated with Major League Baseball or have a coaching job or playing at the Major League level. I mean, if if they say I'm on Jose's side, Major League Baseball will ostracize them and blackball them and then completely mm. get, get rid of them, absolutely. Jimmy and I were discussing just before you got here that uh, were you the first guy to do steroids in baseball or the first uh, big you know, name to do it? That, that's a good question. I don't know. I really don't know. I know I'm the first individual that actually set and broke records while using steroids and educating other players, and that was to them a, a great example. Where did that? So, where did it come from? Were there guys like drug dealers? I mean, where, where, when did you first become aware that this was a, an opportunity and a possibility that could really change your career? Well, for me, it was, it was a different story. For me, um, you know, in nineteen eighty four, I was playing with the Modesto A's, which is A ball, and you know, my sister calls me back home, and I go to the hospital, and my mom's brain dead, mm. and my mom had never seen me play baseball at all. So I promised her on the spot to become the best baseball player in the world. Meanwhile, about two months later. I got acquainted and introduced to steroids, and I decided at that point to use them to fulfill that promise to my mom, become the best baseball player in the world. Who was that guy, though? Was, it, was he a skeevy guy, or how did that come about? No, was he was like, actually a high school friend of mine that was, that was a weightlifter. Oh, I get it. And he mm-hmm. was using steroids, so I yeah, asked him about it. I, I played a lot of high school sports. I mean, mm-hmm. steroid use was, like, rampant in high school. So, mm-hmm. I mean, to think that these baseball guys weren't uh, doing it was it's just stupid. With the people right. I hung out with, pot use was uh, rampant. Pot, right, right. Yeah, yeah, steroids really was didn't. not even in the picture for no, me. No, it was pretty it was much like, just, uh, you got a joint. How do we get a guy to buy a Southern Comfort? Where are we driving? <laughs> yeah. yeah, get someone to buy us booze and some pot and yeah, go to the good. woods. Yeah, on the you woods. You were the pot click. Yeah, you yeah that was me. Jose, yeah. you know when I knew you were on steroids? We said it earlier this morning. When you took that baseball off your head and, <laughs> and then it went over the wall for a home run and you continued playing, I'm like, wow, that guy's on something. <laughs> Didn't even feel it. That guy's on something. <laughs> Didn't even how feel bad, it. How bad of a fucking teasing did you get from your teammates? Oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It yeah. was so funny because I remember, like, if it was yesterday, I'm, this guy uh, from the uh, Cleveland Indians, I forgot what his name is, Martinez, whatever, hits up. I'll send my line dry fly bottom me in right field. And I remember as a child, the first thing they tell you is do not take your eyes off the ball. <laughs> so first thing I do is I I look at the ball, I run back. First thing I do is I look to see where the fence is. And obviously there's a winding track. When you step on it, it feels different and you know how how many feet you have left. Biggest mistake I made. I looked back to the wall. Then as soon as I looked forward, the ball was already on top of me, hit me on the top of the head. I slam into the fence almost at the same time. Boggles over the wall, 
I'm looking on the ground like an idiot around the ball. Meanwhile, David Halton center field is on his knees laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to you, I'm looking for this ball, and I'm saying, oh, my God, look at him. You know, he's supposed to back me up as an outfielder. Yeah. He's laughing on his knees, and I look at him. I go, oh, shit. <laughs> no. Ball went over the fence, went off my head. That's when I realized I started laughing. He started laughing. I think for the rest of the inning, we're just looking at each other, just cracking over. Oh, that's cracking a classic over. It, clip, it was, man. No, it was hilarious. It was I'm, I might be out of, out of school here because I'm not a big sports guy. I'm still, you know, in my heart, part of the part, pot click. But uh, now, do you, I mean, do you think that, that, it, not only is steroid use unavoidable, but there's some people that defend it, and, and they say that well, why the hell not? Let's let them just become these mutants that actually catch the ball with their head eventually. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you think that there's something to be said that it shouldn't be stopped? Well, I mean, it's it's an illegal substance, so it has to be stopped. But if it wasn't, I mean, do you think that performance enhancing drugs will make the game better, or that it takes away the integrity of the game? Well, if it was legal, no one would have a problem with it. And you see, you know, these records being broken daily. But, um, you know, the bottom line is you you can wish for this and wish for that, but it's an illegal substance. Well, how come then there's uh, people that have such a problem with some of these uh, human growth hormones and, and whatnot that um, weren't barred by the uh, by Major League Baseball at the, at the time, uh, weren't illegal, uh, and people were using them, yet they're being ostracized for using them, even though there were no rules against it? I mean, that well, seems odd to me that there it's like a witch hunt with, with people like that. I understand now you get a new player in there. There are rules now. You, you can't use this. You can't use that. But, I mean, they're going after some players years ago when this stuff was, uh, you know, accepted. Right. It, it was. It is a witch hunt, especially going after players, you know, five, eight, ten years ago. Yeah. But what really happened is that, you know, records were being broken. It was becoming obvious now that hmm. the whole league was on steroids. And when that happens, when the obvious happens, then I write my book, Juiced. I mean, something has to be done. So I, I think Congress took the initiative. How bitter are you at baseball? Because you had 462 home runs. I mean, you missed a lot of playing time because of injuries. I mean, right. and they say 500 home runs is pretty much is your first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, your first guy in history to hit 40 home runs and, and, and steal uh, 40 bases. And uh, you get 1% of the vote for the Hall of Fame ballot, which is, I think, baseball kind of, uh, you know, just eh, sticking it to you. I mean, how bitter well, are you? Well, I knew that was going to happen. I wasn't bitter because of that. I was extremely bitter because at 38 years old, 38 home runs for the 500, I was blackballed from the game of baseball that, that I love. I was something you can't play. All of a sudden, my agent was calling around and saying, you know, Jose Canseco will play for free. They said no. Mm -hmm. He said, well, if a major minimum salary comes into play, he'll donate it to a local charity to get some kids out there. They said no. Oh, it's got to hurt. So I knew then and there that uh, you know I was being blackballed. Mm. And, cool. and you knew you had a few books in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least two. Mm. <laughs> at least two, right? right? Do you feel bad? Like, do have you? Are there any of your friends that you've kind of lost? Like, uh, do you feel like you've hurt any guys that you genuinely liked and who are like, what the fuck? We were friends. No, I. You know, I liked them all. But what happened was, as soon as I got blackballed, everyone turned their back on me. No one could talk to me. No one could call me. I mean, in that clubhouse. Guys, not managers, not not no one, not players, no one uh, could communicate with me. If Major League Baseball found out they were communicating with me, they would get also blackballed. Yeah, so it's, it's it's very tricky. It's, it's very delicate. It's like the red. It's like the it's like the Hollywood blacklist. All those guys yes. that were part of the Communist Party, they they just sorry mm. man, you're pariah. That's it. You're on your own. That's it's like it. when mobsters go to prison. Do what you got to do. And you're done. Knowing yeah. it's a fraternity, I just don't understand why you would write the books and just uh, you know just. Uh, ostracize everybody from your life like that well i was already ostracized without this book mm -hmm. knowing from what's about it now what i wanted was obviously to mention these players i i needed one of these players to come by my side and testify on my behalf in congress and say you know what what jose is saying is the absolute truth but i underestimated major league baseball they're so powerful they're such a juggernaut that basically they put fear into these uh baseball players lives and said you know what you testify on behalf of Jose said go we're going to do the same thing to you that we did to him. Right. Mark McGuire kind of, uh, you guys that played together, I mean, you know, uh, the Bash brothers, I mean, you guys were just fucking hitting home runs left and right. And he was obviously, I mean, you said he was doing them. Right. Didn't he sit, did he sit in front of Congress and just refuse to talk about it? I mean, I, did, I, know, I don't think he ever owned up, did he? Well, I mean, when I testified for Congress, it almost felt like I was in the Twilight Zone. All of a sudden, I mean, Sammy Sosa couldn't speak English. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I've known her. She was 19 years old, and he speaks English. So all of a sudden, uh, I don't know. Um, 
my my darny uh, no, uh, no speak English. And then Rafael Palmeiro puts on this really bad acting job. I don't know how to tell you. I've never used steroids. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And then Mark McGuire, I'm like, doo 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 doo. Twilight he forgets zone. everything. He gets abducted <laughs> by aliens. They erase his memory. <laughs> hey, uh, let's not talk about the past because I forgot about it. Let's talk about the present. I mean, I, it was crazy. And it, there was, it, it such, was a circus. There was such a drastic change in his look in such a short period of time from when he was knocking those home runs and from when he was uh, testifying. I mean, he was just a giant. Mark McGuire was bringing oh. huge arms, he was big neck, man. and everything. And there he was. He looked like a bookworm well, now he's a little with the little player. glasses Uncle on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you got to think, all right, come on. Did, you give me a break Didn't here. you write in your book that you uh, injected him? Yeah, definitely injected him. Injected mm -hmm. Mark McGuire with steroids. Now, and uh, Raphael Palmero. And Raphael. Uh -huh. it's really? Mm -hmm. You injected him. Absolutely. Wow. It's funny how McGuire didn't want to discuss the past, yet he didn't mind the past when it was Maris's home run record. And they were <laughs> yeah. on that as he was approaching 60 <laughs> <and> 61. <laughs> Is it weird, like, injecting, like, another athlete in the ass with steroids? Is it a little... A little Homoerotic, like no, because what goes on there? It was going go on down? all the time. No, because you just pull, no. but you have to pull your. Oh my god, the locker room looked like a shooting gallery on the Lower East Side. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just the top I'm of the glute muscle. It's gotta be a little weird. Like if I, if Jimmy needed the steroids, I don't know if I could put a needle in his just ass. Just don't fucking put him on your dick and use that. It's, <laughs> it's just a needle. It's, it's like, not like he's totally naked now. He's just the top of the glute. I mean, we're all right. right. Are you, I'm just trying to make a joke there, Jose. Jesus, it's just the very top, and you don't take off. Now I'm just sitting here thinking, now could I get on steroids? Do I have to work out, or is there? Would it, well, if you want to maximize the effect, yeah, you need to work out and diet properly. And would it help our radio show? You think? Probably. <laughs> it'll, it'll <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> any, anything could help. Yeah, anything it could could help. help. What, the what about a, a, a B twelve shot? Could help at this point. What about the Just rumor like about the uh, the uh, your balls shriveling up to the size of raisins or something? Well, true? they actually atrophy, but not the size of raisins, but they yeah. actually do it. They it doesn't atrophy. affect the penis at all, right? but it does a atrophy your testicles. It just Absolutely. makes the, the balance a little small. The, the balance yeah. looks Which a little weird. Which can't be a bad thing if you got hangers. Make, make your dick look bigger anyway. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard anybody have sex with their balls. <laughs> you know, you, you, have you talked to Jim? <laughs> That's, how got a problem. That's how I show a girl I'm angry. <laughs> I shove the whole bag in there. I'm like, take that. <laughs> Jose, so in the 80s and 90s, how many? Uh, what percentage of players you think were on steroids? You think i know well, it's not an accurate I, right, percentage no, but i mean at the height of steroid ballpark. use it was about 80 <laughs> percent what wow but, yeah it was about 80 percent in the 80s and 90s were on steroids at the height of steroid use which is about when what year mm. i'd say mid 90s 90, yeah mid 90s 80 sure. percent see you should write a book about the 20 percent of faggots <laughs> that wouldn't uh that wouldn't do it <laughs> as a matter of fact i made a comment i said for the last 10, 15 years, find an MVP that was not on steroids. Wow. Really? So, yeah. Let me throw a name at you. Cal Ripken. So if you're saying 80% of the ball players were on steroids. He was six, in the 80s, though, I think. Oh, you're, yeah. you're skirting that one. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I never even heard Cal Ripken related to right. steroids. So he was one of the good ones that probably, uh, probably. He wasn't possibly slugger, avoided it. I'm just, probably. Is it but if 80%, Jimmy, that's not all home run sluggers. You that's, know, Rod right. Carew wasn't. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, Rod Carew wasn't my era. Yeah, slapping at that dumb ball every time he was up. There's absolutely no way for a guy who doesn't use steroids ultimately to compete with a team that is on steroids 80%, that those guys that didn't do it were, were going to be losers. Um, I, I can definitely say the guys on steroids had an edge, a, 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 a big edge. Okay. Sure. Safe to say that a lot of the uh, managers and coaches knew? I, I think they all knew, absolutely. You, you got to mm. think they all knew if 80% right. of uh, Major League Baseball in the height of steroids is uh, on the roids. Well, you you, that, didn't Tony LaRusso admit that he, he knew? Well, at first he said he didn't know. Then he said that he knew that I was using steroids. But, you know, Tony LaRusso had actually... We used to make fun of him because he used to have snitches come in the club out when the managers weren't allowed and the coaches weren't allowed in there to actually look look, look around and listen to see what people were doing. Oh, you think really? he ever manages? He always struck me as somebody that kind of fucking micromanaged a little bit too much. Lefty, lefty, righty, right. We get it. You know. Right. Fucking, <laughs> I mean, he, you know, he was a great manager. He he was a perfectionist. So, but it had to be like it seems to me that I don't know I don't know the history of baseball and, and I'm speculating here. But at the time when steroids started to get popular, that it probably bolstered the game. I mean, that's why the the big shots are into it. It's some money. You guys are like uh, thoroughbred horses. They probably knew of course that the performance yeah. goes baseball up. They're showing was, millions baseball of dollars. was almost dead because of the strike, and then right. next thing you know, we got was that guys hitting five six hundred foot right. homers. Yeah, right. Right. So yeah. that's I mean, why you, you got Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire in the home run competition. They had, which I think is a which was all you know, steroids, it, right? It brought the game back. But they you were, had forty 
46 home runs that year. I mean, that was not year right. 46. That like came you in like 10. Overshadowed. <laughs> <laughs> and you came in 10 last. Year? So on some level, <laughs> steroids saved the game of baseball. Absolutely. At, you know, on some levels, say, it, yes. it saved the game. It brought back, brought back the game to the best game in the world. You know, the home runs, the long ball, the... Uh, you know, Probably that's the why the behind. silence. You know, that's why uh, yeah. a lot of people weren't willing to speak up about it because right. it was bringing it back. Now, what what turned that around? What made it so people started saying, "Hey, got to get these steroids out of baseball"? Well, it wasn't the people in general. It was it was the owners in general. The owners lost control of the salary structure. Uh, now they're paying money. Players. It's all money. Right? So now, if you money. got a player that right. can smash a friggin' home run every time bank. he's getting up there, well, you've got he's going to demand players, a lot more money. Utility players don't even play every day, making eight million dollars a year. That's crazy. Right. And then you've got your best players making, you know, twenty, thirty million. But once these players went to arbitration, arbitration, the the arbitrator, all he does is look at the stats. Mm -hmm. And if your stats fall under a certain category hmm. that enables you to make a certain amount of money, you're going to get paid that kind of money. And the salary structure just went berserk. So Major League Baseball said, the owner said, listen, we got to stop this steroid issue. We're going to send uh, an indirect signal. We're wow. going to blackball Jose Canseco. He's the godfather of steroids. All the players knew it. They were coming up to me saying, Jose, you're being blackballed. You're being... I said, I know. They all knew it. So they said that well, we made a lot of money in the 80s and 90s. Right. You know, and we, now, if we want to hold on to that money. Right. Now we're losing control. Right. It's like you know, money. You, you have a controlled fire in your backyard. You know how to light it. Mm. All of a sudden, it gets out of control. What do you do? Right. I mean, yeah. you have to control it. You got to shut it down. So, that's how about exactly what happened. I'm sorry, Jose. How about people that say like, uh, "Well, uh, steroids might help you hit the ball far, but it doesn't help you. It doesn't help. It doesn't help you uh, concentrate on the ball. Or it doesn't help you." Uh, become like an accurate player. And Your hand-eye coordination right. isn't there. Right. You still got to be able to connect with a fastball to send it over the fence. Right. But then uh, people say uh, that it does help you concentrate. Like, is that true? Doesn't? I don't think so. I, I you know, people <laughs> give steroids way too much credit. You got to have the natural skill. You have. Well, let to me have know. Opie's not skill. on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> Concentrating. <laughs> what will happen? What will happen? <laughs> Uh, I want to get back to the Tony Larusa and the managers. Like, so is it safe to say like Joe Torre uh, knew that guys were doing steroids? I'm safe to say that they own you. Absolutely. Every mm. manager. Absolutely. How come none of them will speak up? Like, if there's so many people who stood up and just said, yeah, it's Why the would truth. they speak up and get fired from Major League Baseball? No, what's the upside to speaking yeah, no up? no upside. That was just a dumb question. Yeah, did George, no did George, uh, George You're not on steroids either, <laughs> dummy. Did, did George Bush know? Did George Bush know when he owned the... I believe he did because oh. when I was traded, the big, the big blockbuster trade from Oakland mm -hmm. to Texas, someone wrote an article saying... I hope George Bush knows that Jose Canseco is a typhoid mayor of steroids. <laughs> so, I mean, a huge article. So he must have known. Did you talk Everyone to else did. Did you have that? Uh, no. no. So the future president of the United States knew. I didn't know. Yeah, of the, course. You know, the you know what I learned today? I didn't, didn't not, know. I didn't know it was uh, 80%. Yes. Of the players. That that just Absolutely. amazes me. I really thought, like, uh, I think Jimmy kind of said it, it was like home run hitters, power hitters. It was like, everyone. No, yeah. pitchers, the whole gamut. Bat about, boys. Yeah, bat boys. <laughs> <laughs> Big, just bulked up bat boys coming out of there. Yeah. What, what's the side effects of steroids? We've heard all sorts of things over the years. I don't think anyone knows what the long-term side effects are because obviously they're, Ill they're illegal. No experimentation has been done on, uh, on a human subject. So we don't, I don't think anyone knows. But what's happened to the guys that have been doing it since the 80s? I mean, I mean the human subject took it upon themselves to go ahead and do them. What have been the repercussions of guys that you know? Well, I have not heard of any deaths directly linked with steroid use. Mm -hmm. Just deaths for trying not. to stop a moving car because you think you can. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. that's a psychological problem. But... <laughs> I, I, th I know in that's professional crazy. wrestling, which has had its scandals as far as steroids go, there have been a lot of deaths that people have attributed to uh, well, steroid use. and then they've done the autopsy and they've checked the blood levels and they've got steroids, they've got cocaine, they've got hair and a speed in their system. <laughs> That's which part you attribute it to Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> right, right. Are you yeah. still doing so, them at all? Like, like, like just to stay in shape or did you just I don't totally use stop? anything illegal. No. Mm -hmm. None of that. Oh, it's no. illegal. Actually, I didn't know. It was illegal like, like uh, against You've the gotta law. You've got to have a prescription for it. Oh. You've got... It, ironically enough, it's real easy to get. If you... The, they did an article saying that 60% of the men in the United States have low testosterone le levels. You just go to a doctor and say, listen, check my blood levels. Oh, you've got low testosterone level? They prescribe you steroids. Here's Would that steroids. help with rods? Would that help with erections? 
Hmm. I'm sure, yeah. drug for As that. a matter of fact, they use uh, that for uh, the therapy. Right. They use testosterone therapy. For Let's uh, look forward to a bulked up Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I, fucking, I fucking love Cialis. Fucking sure three days later, you're like, oh, I'm a fucking real man. This is fantastic. <laughs> but I didn't know. Three days st- later. Well, I mean, it just stays in your system. It's really you're, great. Jimmy right. wrapped Jimmy wrapped some pine tar around the base. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! Get a good grip. <laughs> so, I mean, I know it's a stupid question. You don't regret doing it though. Like you don't like like we, like we see the path that it kind of took you on, or like you don't regret having having taken them. I do regret it, but you know, I had the best intentions when I actually did it to become the best baseball player in the world for my mom who died, and I had the best intentions, but things didn't turn out right. Do you regret naming names, or are there any names that you kind of wish you hadn't, even though you were being honest? No, no, I really don't regret that. What I regret was that none of these players came to my side. Not one. Again, where's the upside, though, you know? Exactly, where's the upside? They're not going to... Uh... No, they're not going to... They saw what happened to me, and they were going to put themselves in that kind of position. There's too much money to be made in baseball. I'm going I'm to miss steroids in baseball. i got to be honest with you, because I don't really care what happens to you guys after after your you know your days are done. I love... <laughs> we're useless know. after that. I, I mean, you guys don't, you know, you don't care about the fans for the most part, about their lives. I don't care about... I, I want to see 500-foot homers. I want to see pitchers throwing 100 miles an hour. Exactly. You I, don't, I don't care. Weird mutants running down the bases. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's kind of a hacky bit, but they talk about like all the drugs that made music what it is today, you know. Right. And imagine yeah. taking the drugs away from these musicians, what crap we'd be hearing on the radio. American yeah. Idol. I'll, I'll tell you guys a, a yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what happened. This is a true statement. Before steroids, there was marijuana and cocaine and liquor. When steroids came in, everybody went on this health diet with steroids and supplements and all that. Marijuana was gone out of the hmm. game. Cocaine was gone and liquor was gone. See, that's no, imagine on, that on who the uh, who has that's the crazy. real balls? Mickey Mantle, who could hit Homer's shit face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right, or Babe a guy Ruth, juiced right. up. I don't. I want to know what Babe Ruth was on because, like, everyone hot had dogs. Fucking yeah. yeah. hot dog and liquor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone had an edge, Women. whether it was steroids yeah. of other or other shit over and he, the years. And he's but, an American icon. Yeah, and yeah. you know, was doing the same thing basically the athletes are doing today with with the women. And I get you. You can exchange the. The the steroids for the liquor yeah. and so forth. So. But now, the, uh, the guy who can play fucked up. That's oh yeah. the real hero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we, were t- we were talking about how the players didn't come to your side and you know stick up for you. Uh, you must have had certain players that just wanted to kick your ass or call you a rat or or some, some shit. I mean, um, uh, actually, players didn't make that comment. Fans did. I guess I'm really for the players, but play- players really didn't get involved. Really, at all. you didn't have anybody that was no. like, ah, Jose, what the fuck are you doing? Well, who's gonna no. like? Who's gonna stand? You know, mm-hmm. another, this another guy. guy that's his size. That's on roids. That's mm-hmm. yeah, like like fellow p- players yeah. maybe would no. be like, Jesus Christ, you know, you're no. stirring up this shit. No, we, no, we never had that because the players knew I was telling the truth. Hey, uh, what's going on with Barry Bonds? In your uh, humble opinion, obviously uh, he wants to continue playing. No one wants to pick him up. He's done. Which, he, but I he, mean, he could probably hit twenty or thirty homers this year, and it would be good for attendance uh, for some of these teams that aren't going to do that well. well then this it would year. have to be an American League team. Obviously, he did. But what's the, the deal age. there? I mean, he obviously has a, a year or two left in him, and I heard they took down all his uh, signage at at, right. at at the stadium and stuff. They well, want to make believe they don't even know him why? anymore. It's very simple. Oh. The deal is they don't know if they're going to convict him of perjury or not. Imagine if a team oh, right. signs him, and in the middle of the season, he gets convicted. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you just can't do that. You, you just can't take that risk. They want to keep that nice family. Wanna, his head got they big after the Royals. I mean, he's played already for 20-some-odd <laughs> years. He's 44 years old. I mean, Jesus, mm-hmm. he's broken all kind of records. Yeah. I mean, do the man they, is... Will they remove records at all, do you think? I mean, there's always this stupid thing with the Astros because he played no. a few more games in Babe Ruth, but they won't take records. They can't do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Yeah. no, they can't. There's no way of judging what steroids did to whom and who really used steroids. And right. Sure, maybe some of them got caught, but what about the guys that you know sl- slipped under the radar? You can't tell. Well, nobody wants the Carl Yastrzemski. What was that, like, the year of the pitcher? I mean, you know, he, he, like, he hit like, was one guy in the league hit 300, he hit like 301. Nobody wants that anymore. People like to see... A fucking mm. offensive but, game. But there must right. have been some guys, like these guys were talking about the fans, there must have been some division among the fans. It would seem to me that the older guys, the older fans, were probably, you know, uh, supporting you. Am I right? Some, in the very beginning, were supportive very little. They thought I was lying. But then when they found that I was telling the truth, they all supported me. Really right. high fives. I'm glad you did that. The old the guys, guys, right? They, right, they, right. I mean, it, it was kind of like a mixture here and there. Uh-huh. But, you know, hopefully this will bring back the game to... Yeah, how it used to be. I, I don't know if it's going to continue to be as exciting, but if you lo- look at the number of fans that are coming out, they've definitely increased. 
You think it's also a lot of the guys that made whatever they made per year, and now they're going out to make their living just signing. Uh, they see a guy like A Rod making fucking it was a two hundred and fifty two million dollar contract, and they're like, ugh. So they have to be happy to see some of these guys uh, at least being embarrassed publicly or. <laughs> Yeah, you really well, don't humanized, me really. It's, Jose it's doesn't like human A-Rod. Factor. You really don't I, like A-Rod. I just, no, I don't like him as a person. <laughs> <laughs> would, would, you say, would you like to smack him if you could? If you, if you could do it and get away with it, would, would it just feel good? One, Just one crack to that dumb, smiling face of his? Well, at least four or five. Oh, yeah, good. I like that. Good. Well, Is he the that. guy you hate the most in the game? Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would definitely say that. Wow, look at the look here, Jose. Right. Jose is not happy. Yeah. Jose's a fucking problem. You don't want to yeah. tangle with Jose. You've had a couple of, uh, couple Jose, of are you, are you writing these books, uh, for the money? A little bit, too? A little bit in there? No. I you just, got a nice opportunity there, because the books come out right, uh, around opening day and all. It's well, perfect it's, timing. Yeah, it's the timing of, of, of the publishers, really. Yeah, why wouldn't you? you yeah. They, yeah, they actually yeah. predict when the books come out. Right. I, have, I have nothing to do with that. But you have enough money to live, you think? Yeah, I just wanted people to know the truth. I wanted them to know what happened. Then I wanted a follow-up to the, to the first book to see that, you know, I, I was completely right, and, and I was vindicated and... And people have changed their, their isn't, opinion isn't that, about me completely now. Isn't that funny about the truth, though? Like, you know, the, it's a weird thing. When you do tell the truth about something, there's a, you, you get that weird double-edged thing where people are like, you know, we really appreciate your honesty. Now get the fuck out of here. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's funny. The truth is not accepted. Yeah, okay, yeah. It never is. Are you it's kidding? It's strange. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you tell the truth, people are like, yeah, we appreciate that, but you can't come to dinner Thanks. here anymore. You right. 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 Get my wife. You want to take <laughs> some phone calls? Sure. Let's do it. All right. Let's see what uh, these guys got. Let's say hi to Chris in New York. Chris, what's going on? Hello, Chris. Maybe we'll get a rod to call in. <laughs> They're gonna rain out. Hey, Chris, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. What's up? What's going on, man? This fucking guy is an asshole. Why is he an asshole? Because <laughs> he's Mark Marin. <laughs> Wait a minute. Fucking rat. Rat, he said. I told the truth. Hello, no comment after that. <laughs> uh, let's, let's say hi to Jeremy in Cleveland. Jeremy. Hey, I got a couple questions for Mr. Conseco. Yeah. What hand did you beat your white with? Your wife with? My white with? He couldn't even get it out. <laughs> He's all <laughs> nervous and pleasant. But it's so easy to ask these questions on the phone. Yeah, he yeah. was all brave to ask it on the phone. Did you come in here and uh, ask this gentleman that same question? And see what hand, the same he hand I'll choke you, you with if I see yeah. you. <laughs> choke you out and fuck you. <laughs> well, it was well documented that you had some uh, some issues with some uh, wives. And, and people called it roid rage. Roid rage. That wasn't even close. If, mm -hmm. you, if you analyze the first domestic violence issue, two cars collided. I mean, when you think of domestic violence, too, about a man striking a woman. Right. Not two cars colliding by accident. This is ridiculous. And the other one, yeah, okay, I pulled my ex-wife's hair. Big whoop. I, I pulled her harder than having sex. And... <laughs> and and well, if you were with that girl on the road, you liked to choke. She would have thought it was. There you go. Air. I'm telling you, yeah, that would have been a good orgasm. Yeah, for yeah. I had a uh, I had an incident once. Uh, never never went anywhere. <laughs> I love how you have to like preface it. It never went anywhere. Girl that had an orgasm. Incident, this was no. This was. Uh, I, I'm not even going to say who it was or anything. But uh, I was with a girl, and uh, this other girl that uh, uh, seemed to uh, think we had a relationship uh, was in the same bar, and. Uh, she was very mad, and the girl I was with then called the other girl a cunt. Ooh. So uh, the other girl went to attack the girl I was with. So I had to hold her back, but she was really drunk, and she started weaving a little bit, and I was trying to guide her out the door, out the front door. She tripped right in front of the jukebox, and her head went right into the jukebox, and it looked oh, like you I it. took her and threw her into the jukebox. <laughs> While you were choking her. <laughs> While I was choking her and fucking her. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, and I was really just, I had her by the shoulders and was trying to guide her toward the door, and she was fighting to get, you know, it's get domestic away. Domestic violence. Could've, and that could've one could have been dom domestic violence Absolutely. if, you yeah. know, the whole bar wasn't Great, laughing man. their asses off instead right. of calling 911. Let's go to Don in Jersey. Don, what's up? Hey, what's going on, hey. boys? Hey. I got a question for Jose. First, I respect what he did because he actually told the truth. Thank you. Um, I'm not asking you to say something that you don't know for fact, but your speculation, do you think Jeff Bagwell was doing the steroids? My speculation, yes. All right, but you don't have any facts on that. No, but he was uh, talked to... Uh, uh, you know, that incident was talked about uh, 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 um, amongst players that, which, that he was using steroids. Which incident? Bagwell. Right, you know, he's got a great reputation, and everybody yeah. says he didn't do it, he didn't do it, he just broke down. But Well, Mark McGuire had a great reputation also. Steroids. Yeah, but if you do steroids improperly, it's been documented how it breaks your body down. 
Right? I don't. I, I I don't believe there's been any long term doc, doc, documentation of any, you know, yeah, steroid if, when use. When you're doing steroids and you continually work out, work out, and you don't give your muscles any time to heal. Doesn't it cause damage? <laughs> if if you overdo it and mix it with other chemicals, probably. Right. Can, that's, yeah. that's what I was referring to. But yeah. like, I, I respect what you did and. You guys hmm. suck, Jimmy. You're great. Right. Thank you, I know nothing about about steroids, but I would assume that, like anything else, in some type of moderation, uh, it probably isn't as bad for you as if you're just <laughs> using too much of it, mm -hmm. like anything else. It's you know, right. if somebody sits around and uh, and uh, smokes a little pot every so often. It's not like the guy that's just constantly stoned. I'm starting to think. Doing but you, I'm starting to think the only guys that weren't doing steroids in the '80s and '90s were guys that were just scared, just scared to do it. Pussies, you're saying, Opie? Yeah, pussies. But a bunch it, of pussies. It gets into a maintenance <laughs> middle situation. Middle relievers and pussies. Scared of needles. <laughs> <laughs> it gets into a maintenance situation, so it becomes hard to be prudent or, or casual about it because you got to maintain it, right? I guess well, so, it's a right? matter of timing too. Eventually, I think. If I would have not have written this book, everyone would have been using steroids. So just a matter of time. Hey, hey, Mariano Rivera couldn't be doing steroids. He weighs 90 pounds. It couldn't be. He looked a lot bigger maybe, than he used to be. Maybe he was one of them who was not. Who knows? Hey, hmm. Jose. Uh, Use him as a needle when he was. <laughs> we're going to go. skinny. No, nothing. <laughs> Hold on. Thank Jeff you. in Staten Island has something. I don't know if you want to answer this, but ask Act. Jose what the guy in the stands at Yankee Stadium said to him that got him so pissed off he had to be restrained. Oh. Do you remember oh, that I, I remember that. I remember that. I think he, uh, oh, I think that was in 1991 when I actually, the night before, I went out with Madonna, and the next day was all over the media, the, the papers. I think he had said something really nasty about my da Madonna and my wife at the time that they were getting it on. It was something uh. crazy and stupid. And he kept on saying it and saying it and saying it. He said some really nasty things. And I just turned around to him, you better shut up. You better shut up. And he didn't, obviously. Yeah. And he left. Hey, <laughs> did you have sex, sex with uh, Madonna? No, I did not. But oh, you, you did introduce her to steroids, obviously. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, that it didn't help her performance. Hers. My God. Let's, <laughs> say, <laughs> let's say hi to Todd in uh, Connecticut. Todd. Hey, Martin. I'll be Anthony. Little Jimmy. Hey, man. Hey, uh, Jose. I'm a big Red Sox fan. I was just wondering, you play for the Red Sox. Uh, I haven't seen none of their names in there. Did, uh, do you know if any of those guys took steroids? Like Big Poppy or Manny? Um, well, I, I didn't know Big Poppy personally or Manny Ramirez personally. They didn't play on the Red Sox team when I was there, so I really have no opinion on that. Uh, so you didn't see anything happening on in the clubhouse then? No, because they weren't there when I was there. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, All right, let's go to Dave in Massachusetts. Dave. Uh, yeah, he says he told the truth and he's sitting there like Mr. Morality, but he, you're profiting from it and personal gain at the expense of other people's reputations. What do you got to say about them? No, I'm definitely profiting from it. I mean, if you write a book, we all work and we all do things to profit from it. I, I, absolutely. But the main issue was, you know, I needed to tell my, my story. Absolutely. And, well, you, you know, we already talked money. about this. It was an attack on these actual players. The attack was, that's fine. You can say what, what, whatever you want. It doesn't bother me one bit, believe me. And the book is called Vindicated, and uh, it's put out by Simon Spotlight Entertainment. They, they have a reputation for doing just excellent, excellent books. Wasn't this the, uh, the OJ people? I wouldn't know. Jose, was it? The, the uh, OJ book that got No, I, I think that was uh, HarperCollins, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Probably, yeah. It's a oh, shitty company. Right, yeah. Simon Spotlight yeah. Entertainment is known. But what they do is they deal with quality only. Ah, what type of publisher did you have, uh, Jimmy? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Same one, Simon Spotlight. <laughs> Let's go to Wisconsin. Paul, what's up? We got Jose Canseco in studio. What's up, Paul? Well, first, I want to thank you for your book and what you've done. Uh, sure. I'm a big baseball fan. I, I, I'm very happy with what you did. Uh, but I, I want to ask about Derek Jeter, if uh, there's any possibility you ever see him or with steroids or anything like that. I'll hang up and hear your answer. No, I don't, I don't think so. He's never been mentioned in any circles. And when I played with the Yankees those two months, it's, uh, no. It's so interesting. Sure. These guys are calling because they're, they're like, what about my hero? Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, what I'm getting to. My hero what calling. about my mother? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if Jeter did him, though. It made him so fucking strong and blowing off fans. That prick. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy used to be a big Jeter fan until he blew him off. So. Yeah, he was very, he was very, very he hurtful. He now hates uh, all of the Yankees because of Derek no, Jeter. No, you know who I like? Oh, I, I was going to mention him. You know who I like the most out of that the fucking Yankees that I met? 
Uh, was, like was, uh, oh, <laughs> that fucking jizz bag. I don't like A-Rod. He's never going to win anything. He's one of those guys. He just won't win. He couldn't win with the fuck. The Mariners couldn't win with him and stupid Randy Johnson and Edgar Martinez. He's never going to win. Uh, was Jason Giambi was the, was the nice Yankee I met. Yeah. And I think people like him because he kind of came out and apologized. And I think he just stopped. Right. Being- I mean, he was honest about it. I said, listen, I, I made a mistake. And that's it. Right. You know, everyone was doing it. One I more. was trying to help our team, our city, our players, and you you, you move on. One more uh, one more question here. Chuck hmm. in uh, Jersey. Chuck. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey. hey. I want to ask him about uh, what happened with Maglio Ordonez when he accused him of doing steroids and... Uh, and no, actually, uh, Maglio... No, Maglio... Mm-hmm. I, I guess I wrote an article, and uh, the, the ar- article was about... That was trying to extort money from Maglio Ordonez. Meanwhile, the article also states that I never spoke with Maglio. I never spoke with his agent. No one there. And I actually did a... No, you wanted money to keep him out of your second book. But this is what I'm talking about now. <clears throat> okay, that, that, ne- that never happened. And then uh, finally, I took a polygraph on it and passed it completely. That, 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 that never took place. If there, if, I'll only say this. I don't know what happened with Jose and Ordonez, but if there was a blackmail... Thing, don't you think that they would have set you up to take the like if, if you were trying to blackmail them? Don't you Absolutely, think they they'd, they'd probably they'd probably take my phone calls and 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 record them. So that right. never happened. Are you at peace uh, as far as the Hall of Fame goes, Jose? Absolutely, That's, yeah, you are. It's a, yeah. it's a rough one though. No, I don't think you know. Even if the steroid era didn't exist, I, I wouldn't be inducted anyways. I, I just don't have the stats. How, I, how many games short. did you miss though? I mean, or roughly. I don't. You know, you know exactly. I had three, four back back surgeries, elbow surgery, hand surgery. So I must have missed a total of three, four years. Total. You and Pete right. Rose just egg the place on uh, Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet paper. Yeah. Bud <laughs> <Yeah. one>. Sulik's <laughs> house. We go by there with about fifty dozen eggs. And just <laughs> yeah. egg, laugh, and drive away. Yeah. yeah. What about uh, past commissioners of baseball? Did they were aware of the steroid thing too? Absolutely. I mean, oh, Bud Seelig was absolutely aware of it. You know, they, they just didn't do anything about it. That's all. Isn't he a doctor, Bud Seelig, or am I, am I completely wrong? Um, yeah, I'm wrong. That makes it even worse. I don't, know. No, I don't know if he is or not. I don't know why I'm thinking Dr. Bud. Maybe I'm confused. What we learned Angela. today is that everyone knew. Yes. yes. It, it, when this it, was being done. When it was you know. good for the game, yeah, who was going to say anything? Cashing checks. Right. right. Hey, yeah. Who's going to, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Right. Who's going to say something? But then the Absolutely. second the owners, uh, as Jose <laughs> said, the second the owners started seeing, oh, we're paying a lot of money for these monsters. Too much right. money uh, going uh, out. No. We're going to have to, yeah. you know, kind of leak this out. And Right. Hey, um, mm-hmm. uh, Jose, it's obvious that we're all just getting along here. We're pals. So why don't you give us a, a huge exclusive right now, <laughs> something you haven't told anyone else. I've told anything everyone left? everything in yeah, this book. Right. How about my, I'll just put it out there. How about just one thing that'll get us, like, international news? Let's go. <laughs> one player. President that's... Bush did steroids, right? <laughs> no. I'll, 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 I'll tell everyone. I injected you before. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, it. There it is. <laughs> Opie. Yeah, oh, I knew it. it. A-Rod used to go from hamper to hamper smelling athletic supporters. Just something <laughs> we can use. That fucking no-winning bum. Oh, we got we got the great Jay Moore on the, uh, the line here. Jay Moore! Hey, Jay, how are you, buddy? Hiya, boys. Jose Canseco looking good. Thank hey, you. How you doing? Feeling good. You guys finally met a guy that blinks more than Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wear glasses. Yeah, you blink a little bit there, Jose. What's that about? I do um, the same thing. Probably my, my two marriages. Nerves? <laughs> right? My divorces. There you go. <laughs> I owe how much? No. <laughs> I've gotten, I've gotten uh, a slight twitch myself. What? <laughs> I love the book, Jose, and uh, I can't ra- wait to get uh, vindicated. Have you read the game, uh, Juicing the Game? No, I have not. That's a pretty good long, like, it's like a tome. It's like 800 pages, and it basically just explains what you've been saying for years of, um, you know, how baseball turned its back because it was so good after the strike for, right. for all these guys to be hitting bombs. Right. And then people say, you can't. Steroid isn't a baseball drug, and they go all these doctors testify about how it's the perfect steroid drug. Right. I mean, it's the perfect steroid sport. I should steroid say. Steroid sport, and and, and, with and the it fast works. Twitch response and the slow sure. twitch with the long season and the anaerobic <laughs> plus the aerobic energy is wasted and spent. But also, Doctor Moore. Uh, yeah, you a doctor? <laughs> yeah. I'm. Yeah. I'm, I might as well have been. You should have seen the weight I put on for the Street Kings movie. I put on thirty pounds. I'm more mm. amazed that uh, Mr. ADD. Read an 800 page book. <laughs> yes. That's a long book. How'd you get past page two? Fucking Cliff Notes asshole. We know what you're right, doing. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? You'd be surprised between the Nixon and Truman biographies. That was like a year of my life. I'll never get back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jimmy, where are you performing this weekend if I wanted to come see you? No. Uh, you know what, Jay? I'll be in New York. I'm not yeah. uh, doing any road gigs. Hey, Jay, uh, I'll be in there. Seattle. Yeah, Jay. We, we got Mark Marin at Giggles in Seattle. Jay, uh, did we do all right with the interview? Is there a question we didn't ask? Was that Mark Marin? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, pal. What's up, buddy? Like I said, I'm ADD, few, Jay. I'm one of the few people who are angry around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jay, about Mark and I, we just kind of rub each other the right way. And oddly, too. Like, you wouldn't put us in the same room, usually. <laughs> yeah, well, we've gotten along because I tolerate you. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jay, you, man. Jay, so in Seattle, June 28th, I'm at the Pageant Theater in uh, St. Louis, right? Very nice. Jose Canseco's got a book out, and did he uh, pork at uh, Janice Dickinson in uh, The Surreal Life? Not even close. No? <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you something funny. Oh, Makeup does about... wonders for her. <laughs> I forgot about that Jeez. show, man. That Makeup cool barely show. does wonders for her. Yeah. No, like it really helps her, because darn. That's why I was in Matt. She was like, madam. <laughs> darn. Darn. It's <laughs> <was> like madam. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Jay, you're asking... Before I leave you guys to uh, your interview, by the way, congrats on Leslie Nielsen. I loved it. Uh, <laughs> oh, you heard that one? <laughs> oh, he <wonderful>. didn't. <laughs> he didn't really hear it. Did he bring his fart machine? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Jay, he, oh, just, God. Hey, Jay, he was on the phone. Jay, you're a big sports guy. Did we ask everything, or what? Are, are we missing something here? Pretty much. It's too bad about the back surgeries because Jose was on the fast track for the Hall of Fame. Absolutely, he was. Play this game all the time. Oh, does Don Mattingly belong in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely. Yeah. Right, Even guys. though you, you know what? I, 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 he retired because he had one back surgery, I think. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. That knocked him out of the pussy. game, but definitely. He's a pussy. His last season, he had like 49 <laughs> runs batted and like seven home runs, but that he was fucking injured. Yeah, yeah the but injuries. The guy, you got to keep in mind, Don Mattingly and Kirby Puckett's numbers are exactly the same. The only difference is the rings. And, and Don Madeline never raped someone blind with pot with glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Girardi, greatest slugger of all time. Go. Go. <laughs> Joe Girardi. Yeah. I'm exactly. A, I'm, I'm going to do my impression of Ahmad Rashad interviewing Jose Canseco, okay? All right. All right. Jose, sheer will. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you said. <laughs> Remember when he used to swing for Michael Jordan's balls? He would just go up to Michael and not ask anything. Just go, Michael, intensity. <laughs> 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 Fucking Jay, man. Uh, well, I really. Oh, does Roland still work? I got a lot of catching up to do because I'm finally back at work, so I'm up early to call you guys more. Uh, yeah. Does Roland still work there? Yes, yes he does. Well, he's here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but he talks exactly like Tara Reid. Oh, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. We'll have to look into that. He, he does. And then when he's done, he kind of goes, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Jose, uh, I met you at, tw you don't, probably don't even know who I am. I, um, I met you at 24 Hour Fitness. I'm the comic, Jay Moore. Okay. And you were doing, that's the, like, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> you just got an okay. If you, if you, Jay, my dick got hard from that response. You know how happy that made me? That's exactly the response I've gotten from every famous person I've met more than once. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. Here's the strange part about Jose Contejo. He's a 24-hour fitness. First of all, he's like, you know, a fucking borderline Hall of Famer. He works out like where I work out, and the Persian people in the Valley of L.A. I don't want my fucking 400-plus home run hitters I don't want to wait for the tricep extension between him and some fucking hairy Persian lady. <laughs> and he's sitting on a bench, and for a half hour, this fucking mental patient is working wrists. <laughs> I go, he's like, I'm just working wrists. Stay in, blink, blink. Just staying in shape, blink. He wants to keep his smack in shape. <laughs> Holy smokes. He just sat there working wrists. For forearms. They call forearms. <laughs> they forearms call forearms. forearms. <laughs> yeah, you do them. All right. Thanks, Jay. I gotta, I'm going to mention uh, where Jose is doing some signings, too, man. Because uh, there's obviously going to be a line. Uh, the book is called Vindicated. I think it comes out today, right? Well, is it, is it today or Oh, yesterday? yeah, I think it... Last Thursday it came out, but the little... Yesterday and today. Oh, okay. Last night, what an ill-informed asshole I am. All right, well, it's out now, so <laughs> hey, buy it. Hey, sir, did we do a good job for you over there? You guys are fantastic. We love your show. You guys do a great job. We really appreciate you. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much, Jeff Garland. That's my 330-pound nice. attorney. <laughs> he's a oh, nice. <laughs> hey, uh, he's, Obviously, he's, he's on, on the roids, too. Yeah, <laughs> take care of him, so. Hey, we got uh, the, the, the site. I'm going to plug. Is there a website? First of all, I'll give out two things. T today... Uh, at 3.30, there's a great independent bookstore in, in uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey called Bookends, which is a great place. You can get a lot of people in there for a signing. And then tomorrow, uh, if you can't get out to Jersey today, here in New York, 
uh, at 12.30, the Barnes & Noble on 5th Avenue. I think that's Union Square, am I correct? Correct. Uh, it's a massive one, too, so don't worry about no, not no, getting... Not the Union Square one, it's the other one. Oh, it's not? No. 5th Avenue and what? Do you have a cross street? 46th. Okay, 5th and 46th. Again. Yeah, and nobody tells me anything. They just give me fucking 500 dates here. <laughs> but either way, 5th uh, Avenue and 46th, Barnes & Noble, 12.30 p.m. tomorrow. Today at 3.30, bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And is there a website where you can get the rest of the signings? JoseCanseco.com. Nice. Okay, good. I'm surprised some cyber squatter shit didn't grab that. Like no shit. Didn't <laughs> How does Jose Canseco have his name and Jim Norton is taken? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, fucking disturbs me. Sonny Ferrelli from Boston writes, ask Jose about Goody Two Shoes, Kurt Schilling. What about Kurt? Oh, what a hypocrite that guy is. <laughs> oh, my God. That, he made such a big fool of himself before Congress that one of the uh, congressmen had to reprimand him. He's just ridiculous. <laughs> that guy's an idiot. Why don't, why don't you? How did he make a fool of himself? I don't remember. Aside from his fucking tampon sock, which was fake. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, at first they had him on this task force for, for Congress yes. to stop steroids. Then he says, right in front of Congress, there's not a problem. There's no steroid problem. Then in an article a few months back, he says, there is a steroid problem. So which one is it? Is there a steroid problem or is there not a steroid problem? He, he was just blabbing out left and right. And in your mm. opinion, was he on the roids? <laughs> Kurt, no. No, I don't think so. Two goody two shoes? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Just a fucking wispy haired mm. asshole. Nobody <laughs> likes shilling. <laughs> Fuck you and your killing the Yankees in, yeah. in, with the Red Sox out with those dirty fucking Diamondbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Johnson, homosexual? No. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate him. That'd be a big one. <laughs> yeah, he certainly would. Hey, do they call him the big unit because of his cock? That's the, 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 the rumor. No, I don't know about that one. Well, I mean, it was just the rumor. Right? Not that I, you know. Right. Maybe because he's 6'10"? Yeah, he really no, is a fucking know. lumbering John Holmes idiot. <laughs> he falls into a well. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hate him. He's done nothing but murder the Yankees his whole <laughs> shitty career. <laughs> Holy fuck. All right, we're going to let Jose go. <laughs> yes, Very busy man. The book, uh, of course, is called Vindicate, available in bookstores and on Amazon.com. And uh, thanks for the honesty, man. We appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, guys. Cool. We'll see you soon when my third and fourth and fifth book come out. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> we are you guys in it. And don't get married again. What the fuck? Uh, well, don't. don't. Oh. All right, guys. Take care. Ironclad prenup. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Thanks, man.